Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning to everyone on the platform. We have an apology from Mr. CBC, who is experiencing a load shedding and doesn't have connectivity, but he might join the meeting as soon as uh, electricity is back. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, DM to the department or uh, DDG, acting DG, uh, it can be DM, DDG, acting DG, whoever who's in here. Uh, let's be business like. Uh, acting DG, uh, we want apology, acting DG. We are in a meeting now. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get through. I mean, young, 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 young. Um, it's Zolega, uh, Uti DG or acting DG, uh, Uti Izuma, I'm Fagi. Who else who's in here? Uh, do you have apologies whilst you are talking to my phone, uh, DG? I, I need to apologize now. Okay. Who's going to lead okay, if we are... Uh, Sumaya can lead. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, DDG, uh, who is acting DG, is saying that in a Krakiam Nabela can't get in. He's saying that DDG Sumaya is going to take us through. But uh, let me ask uh, DDG Sumaya, do you have apologies? Electricity. Did you Sumaya? No, not available. Who else is here from the department except the oh, deputy minister? Deputy uh, minister, can I have apologies? Sorry. Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning. Apologies. Yeah. It's, it's Sumaya Khan, Deputy mm -hmm. Director General, Recreation Development and Sports Promotion. Um, Madam Chair, I'm also joined here by the Chief Director uh, for Infrastructure Development, Mr. Firstly, we still, we still want apologies and then you will oh, tell sorry. us. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, apologies. <sighs> Madam Chair, it looks like there are no it looks like there are no apologies from the department and we did not receive anything as well. So okay. we can continue, Madam Chair. Okay. Um DM now um, no, it's not yet you. Um uh, who else is all supposed to give us a Salka and National Treasury? National Treasurer, can we have uh, apologies? Chairperson, uh, no apologies from National Treasury. The team is led by Wendy Fano from National Treasury. Thanks. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Salka. Good morning, Chairperson and Committee members. Um, we have an apology from our two political representatives. Uh, Councillor Ngobani and Councillor Naidu, they're both currently experiencing load shedding. Um, we will be led by um, Mr. Mjibeli Kulisa and James Matsi from Salga, whilst our politicians are struggling with load shedding. Uh, chair. Oh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Naidu, you have Yes, yes. Sorry. I have just received a call that our minister is struggling to connect, but will join the meeting as soon as he's able to connect. Thank you for that. Honorable members, these are apologies. Any acceptance of the apologies? Chairperson, good morning. Honorable Adams, I move for the adoption of apologies. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is now the agenda in front of us. Uh, I would love to check uh, 
honorable members who can uh, propose the adoption of the agenda. <clears throat> yes, honorable Mshongo. Can I move for the adoption of the agenda? Thank you, honorable Mshongo. Who's seconding? Chairperson, I second. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, honorable members. Honorable members, I must take this opportunity uh, to raise the concern of the two presentations, which uh, the norm of this committee, I don't know other committees, you can't uh, submit um, a presentation on the eve of the meeting. Members, they need to read and familiarize with the, the documents. I've asked the, uh, the secretariat on Thursday, uh, saying that uh, I'm seeing that it's Wednesday and today is Thursday, uh, the presentation of um, uh, Salka and National Treasure are not with us. And then on Friday, they, the presentations were not there. Saturday, I'll call the office and Sunday. And then Monday, very late Monday, uh, I must uh, report that to you, honorable members, that we, we did get uh, these uh, two presentations uh, in the evening uh, yesterday. And, and I'm, I'm not sure whether even in other committees, uh, it, it's the norm that they can accept the late uh, pre, uh, submission of the information because the information is for the members that they must read and understand the presentation. Um, uh, um, I want to raise that, honorable members. Honorable members, as the norm, uh, I will put it to you. Chairperson. Uh, honorable Dennis. I, I would like to, to express my um, I would like to express my disappointment towards the um, affected presenters that did not um, comply with our committee rules. Chairperson, um, I, I I appreciate your 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 efforts and your staff's efforts. Uh, in a few days before the before today's meeting, trying to. Um, you know, trying to obtain the information that we as committee uh, need, and as you indicated, more so now during um, uh, during this bad uh, um, load shedding, which you can't actually plan the same times to prepare. You need to just see when that uh, you know information is available, and, and and you can do it. So so really, um, and it is um, it is not people that are unfamiliar with presentations and appearing before committees and so on. So um, I find it strange that we are that we are losing that we are losing track on on our normal um, uh, pro meeting procedures um, of planning of meeting procedures and that the presenters must know before the time that they must that they must allow this committee to to read through these presentations, prepare questions, and engage and engage and engage with them. So yes, I think we as a want to support you as a chairperson. We want to express our disappointment. And if our committee has a rule, uh, chairperson, um, then 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 we must stick to our rules because uh, if, if we're going to be flexible and bend it for certain people, then there's no point having these rules. Um, um, so that is that is my view, chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Sibia. Mm, thanks, Chaperson. Morning to everyone. Uh, it, I, I think uh, Honorable Dennis covered me, but if we can get good reasons why the, the reports were not sent in time. Thanks, Chaperson. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, before now giving to each department, uh, they are in the platform. Uh, 
Honorable members, they are saying you can't bend the rules uh, which we have been operating with those rules that we don't uh, take late presentations. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's it. If you want to say something, but the rules of this uh, uh, committee is that a presentation did come in the eve of the committee. They, we don't accept those uh, presentations. Uh, National Treasurer, can you tell us the reasons why you didn't present uh, the, the presentation in time? Uh, Chairperson, if we can just please raise our biggest apology for the late submission. And I know that administrative reasons is not a good enough reason, but we did have to meet internally through a number of units within National Treasury to finalize the presentation, particularly the last slide where we wanted to focus on advising the committee. So please accept our apology and um, we're really very sorry. Thanks. But you did hear that members, they're saying we don't bend rules because today is, is national treasure. Who else must uh, not uh, come in time? Uh, Salka? Good, good morning, honorable members of the committee. Uh, honorable chairperson, my name is Ntobeli Kolisa from Salka. I would like to also firstly apologize profusely for not submitting the presentation on time. We, we, we initially we misunderstood the communication, I must confess, that the letter was, that was written was saying that the department will brief parliament and then uh, 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 Treasury and Salga will make uh, uh, comments. We understood it in that way. Only when we again looked at it again and again, we realized that in fact, we must have our own input. Initially, we we're trying to see if we can make inputs into the presentation of the department as the letter seemed to suggest. But we realized later that uh, in fact, we have to have our own separate presentation as, as, as Salga. And then we a bit struggled because we wanted to our presentation to talk to the input that would have been made by the department, which we didn't have at the time. Uh, we apologize for that confusion, uh, because once we realized then we had to engage between different sections of the organization to try and pull together the presentation. We understand that uh, we, are, um, we are now out of the rules of the committee, we are in the, at the mercy of the committee. Thank you. I wanted that at the end, uh, can, can we take a stance that as they are saying that they were thinking that they will comment, they must not present, and then they will be comment when they want to comment. Is it is it right? And then I'm giving to Honorable Matlingos. I'm seeing the time that we are taking now. Honorable Matlingos. Chairperson, Ngozi, Giltuba, and I would love to, to enter to to, to still reiterate what you said, Chairperson Uba, we are not going to entertain late uh, submissions of presentations. Double Honorable members, uh, is there any other view? S seemingly, there are no hands. You are not going to present anything uh, uh, as, you, as you were thinking that you are not going to present anything, but I don't think it's correct. Uh, the, uh, how many years that we are in, 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 in this government and you will never ever not present uh, Salka. Uh, fortunately, some of us who were with you in the past parliament, you, 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 there's no point that in both of you were thinking that you don't need any presentation. presentation. It must be in the department. It's, it's your... Oh, that that uh, point uh, is not acceptable, but you are saying, you, you're asking apology. Uh, DM, can you lead us? Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and good morning to the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee and, and the officials uh, from the department, from the Treasury, and from 
from Salga. So I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to uh, allow the department to present. So this, is, this is a very important uh, portfolio committee meeting today, which will be discussing the, the Ring Fence the, uh, Municipal Infrastructure Grant Program, which is very critical to the infrastructure of the sport facilities in the country. So it's a very critical uh, discussion. I will allow the, the department to present and then the discussion, obviously, I'll come uh, at, the, at the end. Hopefully, uh, load shedding would still allow me to be part of the meeting. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DM, so much. Uh, DG Sumai. Um, thank you very much. Good morning, Chairperson, and good, no good morning, Honorable Members, uh, Deputy Minister, Minister, um, and colleagues uh, present. Um, Chairperson, let me just indicate that um, representing the department, we have also the uh, Chief Director for uh, Infrastructure Development, Mr. Lebokang Makwera. Uh, we're also joined by the Chief of Staff, Mr. J.P. Lowe, uh, the Minister's Advisor, Mr. Mdobi Tum, Tamzashe, our Parliamentary Liaison Officer, Simeon Nkanuno. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Watani Sibuyile um, and our um, Director of Infrastructure uh, Planning, Mr. Uh, Engineer. Uh, Mr. Uh, Songezo Patela. Madam Chair, we are presenting on the progress on the implementation of the Ring Fenced MIG program. I am going to ask the Chief, Chief Director, Mr. Lebohang Mukwera, to take us through the presentation and we can come in to enhance later, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Over to Mr. Uh, Mukwera. Thank you very much. Uh, DDG. Uh, good morning to Chair, uh, the Honorable Chair. Good morning to the Honorable Members of the Committee and the Deputy Minister. And good morning to all the colleagues from both uh, and uh, National Treasury. And thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my presentation primarily, Chair, as opposed to uh, what we uh, what we normally did in the past, just reflect on the projects that we'll be implementing uh, in a particular year and just give progress as far as those projects are concerned. Uh, the main objective, uh, because this committee was somehow dedicated to look solely on the MIG, we felt that it's only befitting that we must at least give a sense to the honorable members about the performance of the entire program since its inception in 2017. And then thereafter would uh, deal with a bit of a detail as far as comments of the project are concerned and uh, deal with the challenges and the way. Yeah, I deliberately omitted the whole aspect of the background to the MIG, primarily because of it has been dealt with in the committee in the previous meeting, but also looking at the size of the presentation. Uh, I felt that maybe the best thing would just be into the chat. If questions may arise as far as that is concerned, that can also be dealt with at a later stage. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, the program of the Ring Fence started in 2016-17, of course, following the concern by the sector and also by the portfolio committees, I have to say. Whilst we do have money within the municipal uh, uh, the grant, uh, which is basically 5%, the unfortunate part is that we see that money not uh, being used up. And therefore, a resolution was taken that a portion of that 5% must then be reinvested uh, and be allocated accordingly by the Department of Culture. And somehow, an exception was made that uh, when those allocations are made, they should not necessarily base on what's supposed to be a 5% by a municipal, but rather on the project needs submitted by the municipal. Uh, uh, Chair would remember that when we started, of course, the amount of ring fence was 300 million. And in that specific year of 1617, 30, uh, 30 municipalities were allocated. And in the subsequent year, uh, 34, and then it follows with 30 municipalities. In some instances, we have 
But from year three, Chairperson, you would notice that uh, the fund started to decline primarily because of the issue of the budget cuts. And we must indicate, of course, we indicate that we were consulted by both Treasury as well as COPTA to say this is the situation where we are in. Your program will also be. Then uh, other subsequent years, Chair, it's basically as it is shown there, how over time we managed to, all, to allocate and those other municipalities that we have uh, uh, repeated over time. The most important thing to note, Chair, is that uh, this point, uh, which is 22-23, of the 205 local municipalities we have allocated, 193 and the estimated budget that was allocated over that period it's uh, uh, 1 million 1.9 billion uh, that's what we're saying almost a 2 billion band. and uh, number of the beneficiary municipalities in that region would be 173 193 projects some of the municipalities that benefit that it's 173 and the outstanding municipalities uh, it's it's perfect. I would want to submit my sincere apology because I just realized this morning as I was preparing for this presentation and realized that unfortunately the document that was forwarded, this specific slide was not necessarily a complete slide and it had some few errors. But however, the information that we sought to summarize in this specific slide is sufficiently covered in this slide. And I will then expand on it accordingly, somehow trying to give an overall slide of the performance. Next slide, please. Chair, with regard to 1617 allocations uh, of uh, those uh, 30 projects, uh, this table here seeks to give a sense uh, uh, in terms of performance, uh, uh, number of projects that we have allocated, what was the amount, and of that number allocated, how many were actually and this is not necessarily to say that they were completed in that specific time, but uh, we, we reflect that the status of a at the time this presentation was uh, prepared, meaning that some of the projects were completed uh, later than the, the planned financial years. And instances where we had uh, we still have uh, incomplete projects, the last call of the chair seeks to give reasons as to why uh, and, and what would be the situation currently as far as those projects is concerned. Here we see that we only have one in terms of the estimate. And then we, with regard to KZN, we also have one which is uh, Cockstart, also reflect the reasons, reasons as to why. Uh, in particular, in that regard, uh, it was an issue of the environmental impact because unfortunately the municipality started the project that they did not necessarily uh, observe that legislative requirement and the project interrupted and only after that uh, requirement was satisfied then the project resumed. At this stage, the project is at 90% complete. Next slide. And then uh, those are remaining uh, provinces, Chair. Uh, 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 in, uh, 17. And Chair, I would want to draw the attention of the committee to uh, municipalities allocated at the time, Kamisberg uh, and Aima. Uh, with Kamisberg, uh, Chairperson, this project did not even commence primarily because uh, Cocta declined to register it. And their main reason was that the site which was identified by the municipality. Uh, is a site owned by school, the public uh, school, and it was not necessarily within the premises of the municipality. And there was a consensus, both with the school as well as the, both with the school as well as with the uh, community itself, uh, to say we are fine with this site. It's strategically located. It's accessible to all, and we even share facility. But unfortunately, Copter insisted that the site had to be owned by municipal and not necessarily. I know that colleagues in Treasury had a different view to that because the argument was that we all meant, but that's basically eventually what happened. And with Kaima municipality, we allocated a project, uh, a single project for both. The municipality then just decided to 
uh, uh, when the money arrived without even consulting with the uh, department, decided to spread that 8 million allocation singly uh, uh, amongst three projects because the logic was that you know, all towns must be accommodated and going to an extent that absolutely nothing could be completed with a 2.5 million person. And we only got to discover that at the later stage. And what is even worse, uh, the facility was left in a worse condition than before they were actually uh, touched. And that was a, an unfortunate situation. But these are the few exceptions uh, which were not necessarily good uh, stories. All in all, except these municipalities, all other projects uh, uh, were completed uh, accordingly. Next slide. Uh, this is the list uh, uh, the breakdown of what the, the honorable members just saw. Uh, 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 I believe honorable members might have an opportunity to go through the list. We tried to ensure that the uh, presentation uh, gets to reach honorable members on time to make their notes. I would not necessarily go to this list in it, but I've already summarized it. We can proceed to the next summary slide, we can also ask this. And then the next year, Chaperson was 2017, 2018. Uh, I think in terms of our main summary slide, that we think and still it was 100 million. And that is the performance uh, uh, in terms of the provinces. Uh, uh, and then that's, those are the allocations which were made as well as the number of projects. With regard to East Cape, uh, we have only three projects, notwithstanding the fact that they started in 2018, uh, that have not completely closed out or got at a 100% completion. Uh, Raymond Dusaba, Walter School, and uh, the reasons are given in that column, Chair uh, Raymond Dusaba. That the main issue was the dispute uh, between the main and the subcontractors. But we also had serious challenges in terms of operation of the municipality. But sometimes we do encounter those instances where you would give the municipality allocation. Prior to allocation, they are fully compliant and obedient. Once the money is in their coffers, uh, we start to see a change of attitude uh, only to the detriment of the project, unfortunately. And with regard to Walter Sisulu, uh, there were disputes as well, but between the municipality the contractor, as well as the, uh, the consultants. And with regard to uh, the project was co-funded by the municipalities, that is very much commendable. And uh, their project required about 70, 47 million, I'm sorry about that. And as the sake, we only, allocated 12 million because we've been trying to try and uh, observe the principle encouraged by cocktail as recording stopped provision of basic facilities recording in progress um, uh, now Chair, it, it is more of a multi-year project for them and uh, fortunately they are at 95 percent and the outstanding work is to lay a final track uh, uh, on the athletic track, uh, they are doing a cutting indicate that they have co-funded the project uh, talk about what not mean the issues of this performance. And then in Copanum Chair, uh, I also recently looked at that project, uh, it's a disaster uh, The contractor that was appointed had financial challenges, immediately reputated from the contract. Uh, I was told that the outstanding amount uh, on the project is four million, but one must indicate that even the work what it needs to be remeasured that is on site uh, it does not necessarily uh, equate to the amount claimed to have been spent. And we are still busy engaging with the municipality. They have just recently submitted a report to how do they intend to finish on that as well as the funding in that. And then the Mfuleni, uh, Mfuleni is one of the uh, municipalities we have been getting uh, cooperation and that to, a extent, to an extent has compromised our ability to 
effective monitoring, what is even exacerbated the situation was the fact that um, now and then, because the position has been for a while, a number of people. When you get here today, it's this one. When you get there, it's another one the next day. And, and there, is even, there isn't even a proper handle. But uh, what has been reported as, as a progress was that the consultant has been appointed and they are still busy with the designs. Next slide. And uh, on this one, Chef for 1718, uh, the problematic municipality was in Lima, uh, but they never got to, to implement the project at all, uh, primarily because site identified was adjacent to the national road. And there was that understanding that guidance from Sandra would then be required. And that was an activity because that was by a municipality. It remained an excuse, uh, that whole issue of not getting a guidance from Sandra until such time uh, we got to a point where money then had to be uh, surrendered and, uh, through shopping and reallocation something that ourselves, we, we um, tested. And the other one went back, unfortunately. And the last one is Siamuma. Uh, sorry, uh, Langeberg. Uh, this is another problematic area for us. Uh, this project also was not registered, uh, uh, almost similar to Kamisberg in Northern. This instance, the site identified, one would say uh, it was surrounded by say 50% of the households which are classified as and poor, and the other side was 50% uh, poor households. Now, because of the site could be accessed by, by households that are classified as and poor, uh, Cocta felt that uh, uh, MIG requires that in such instances, if a municipality wants to use MIG on such a site, the municipality must then count a fact. Uh, uh, with a percentage equivalent to a percentage of households that will be benefit from that facility. And remember, Chad, this is a small facility. It's not like a small uh, Now, unfortunately, the municipality was not in a position. Uh, they were not in a position. Uh, uh, we argued to say, look, as sports uh, as a culture, uh, but ours is social cohesion, and amongst other things, is to promote social integration as well as interaction between not only races, but also between different uh, classes as well as. Gender. And for us, this facility would serve an ideal people as far as those social interactions and the interaction of those classes. It is an ideal, but unfortunately, that argument uh, did not. And, and notwithstanding the view that we also had about the interpretation of the policy, what we did not agree with the interpretation. And next slide, please. It's the same principle, Chair. These are the details of big municipalities under that finding. And then going to 2018 19, um, uh, those are the allocations that we made. Province. Those are the number of projects that we uh, allocated in the province. But performance in that regard, uh, and, and I think in this specific year, performance was relatively better. Uh, we had two incomplete projects, the first being Emma in Eastern Cape, and the second being in Kipir, still in the Eastern Cape. Uh, it was also a matter of contractual disputes, and the result of the contract was uh, terminated. Uh, the municipality were advised that it's still pursuing a legal route uh, uh, to seek damages or, or, or penalties on, on the contract. However, the municipality, uh, because they really desired to continue the project, availed four million in the current uh, financial year to augment an additional uh, amount allocated by DSEC to ensure that the project is completed. And as far as Mujahid is concerned, uh, the, con the contract or rather the municipality could not unfortunately afford the cost escalation because there were a number of interruptions as far as the implementation of the uh, project is concerned. Just like it is the municipality where they would then augment uh, uh, 
owing to the implications of COVID-19. Within Musa Hill, unfortunately, they were not in a financial position uh, to do that, and that in itself also compromised the... The next slide. And uh, with regards to Malanga, uh, we had only two municipalities, we have only two municipalities that have not uh, completed. And one in the main, uh, the contract was frustrated by uh, what we now call the construction mafias uh, or the local business uh, forum uh, that had both a uh, dispute with both the municipality as well as the contract. I think one has to about on that phenomenon, but we know that it's a growing phenomenon in the country, and some of our projects, of course, are affected by that. And then, with regard to Mbombela, uh, there is a progress on site, uh, and the project was beyond what we have allocated because the municipality wanted to go for a bigger facility, and that's why they have counter funding. So, in a way, that somehow structured the project into a multi year project. It's a problem. With regard to Kulukwani Chairperson, the chair uh, would remember that this is one of the projects uh, where uh, a decision was taken that uh, we should try to convince uh, the different sporting codes uh, not to only concentrate in terms of the development of their uh, uh, capital uh, or facilities. Uh, rather, we should encourage a practice where these uh, uh, capitals of sporting code across all nine countries. And consistent with that understanding, Polo Kwani talks about Polo Kwani as the reference, and they had a justifiable reasons uh, uh, best to uh, why. No, I'm, I'm sorry now, Chair. I'm speaking about Polo I'm reading for what. No, let me apologize. I, my eyes will be, it appears as if it's followed. Let me speak to you, Northern Cape and uh, Those two projects, Chair, uh, they have somehow, I could say, somehow collapsed, particularly Pogwani, uh, where there was work done to a certain extent. But unfortunately, along the way, there were disagreements between the municipality uh, as far as the documents are concerned, and ultimately, there was a reputation from the country. As it is now, the project is in the worst condition than it was when the project was It was over time, in basis of an. And then, with regard to Asaponyan, now and then there is an ad hoc uh, 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 effort from Asaponyan uh, to try and finish uh, the project there. But the initial contract that, that was appointed apparently had serious uh, cash flow problems. Until when the municipality paying him uh, for the work done, the money in apparently starts to a point that do not even with the work. So on a hoc basis, the municipality is trying to harvest money from wherever they can and try to finish some of the outstanding uh, out items. Then Western Cape, uh, the only municipality that has not finished here, it's uh, Dodge. Uh, because they had identified, they had a challenge with the site, uh, and as this year, of course, we we have raised a a concern as far as the site identified for the project. But it is a matter uh, that, regardless of the fact that it's an 1890, because money was given, we still want to establish from them if they have not necessarily identified an alternative site and use the funds that we have allocated to them. Next slide. We can pass these uh, two slides. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in 1920, uh, uh, in Eastern Cape, of the three allocated, one that was uh, completed, and then the two were not uh, completed. And those uh, two is Amazon and Toronto. But currently, Chairperson uh, has indicated that their progress is at uh, 60% and uh, Percent respectively. Uh, uh, at some point, this uh, Amazon municipality, due to poor performance in this current in that current financial year, the money unfortunately uh, was taken. But the municipality uh, did the right thing, and that they still owe support. 
uh, money. They then reallocated in the subsequent. Toronto was also uh, uh, somehow delayed by the whole process of environmental impact assessment because there was an oversight of the participation. And then the uh, municipality that did not finish in uh, the state out of the three that were allocated was Mahulu because they had uh, faced the project and decided to uh, co-fund it. However, the allocation that we have made as a and I think it was spent million, uh, it was all spent. And I can uh, assure the chair that this specific project, it's not the one that was the media where the municipality was reported to have spent, I think, 21 or 27 million. And when you go on, the only thing that was found, found there was just a uh, project. That one was not funded by our funds. And in case at the end of the three, we uh, allocated it's one that is not yet complete. Uh, because it's phased as a multi year, but one of it uh, is uh, complete. And then uh, this is the issue that I was talking to earlier of, about Polokone Software. Uh, it's a multi year project uh, which is allocated at 90 million for a construction of a completely new uh, softball diamond there. Uh, reason to one visited the site, and uh, at some point, the Arabo members maybe could have an opportunity. I'm sure they would also be very happy about the work that is in that uh, one in all stadium. Next slide. Uh, Mpumalanga performed well in that year as well as Northern Cape. And with regard to uh, Northwest, of the three given, two were not completed. Uh, it was also issued of contractual as well as cash flow when that the contract uh, was then terminated and the municipality is still in the process of uh, resuscitating the project and dealing with the matter. With regard to my it's not necessarily scheduled for uh, because it's the same principle as with Polo. Uh, we are upgrading that facility consistent with the request and the requirements for them to host international events in been phase multi-year project uh, because it was in facility. But phase one and phase two of, of projects uh, are actually completed, uh, although we would need to visit now because of, uh, I don't know whether it's issues of friendship or there was an issue of a delay of a use of certain uh, cards because cards could stay for a while without being used. The matter is now being attended, uh, and very soon uh, the subcontract will be going on site. Those phases complete. And we can pass that slide, uh, go to one. Uh, that is basically the performance chair. Uh, Eastern Cape this time around did exceptionally well. All the and uh, with regard to free state of the three, only one, uh, and the main thing that uh, caused it, uh, because they are installing there an artificial turf, it is the delivery of the artificial turf for the progress is present. Uh, how can we did not allocate that already uh, allocate for the municipal, and that's why they were not then with regard to the case at end of the four allocated, uh, it's only one uh, that was not uh, <clears throat> completed for the same reasons as Mumpaka. They are just waiting for the delivery of the after the efforts will be completed. And then with regard to Limbogo, uh, follow one, uh, I've indicated it's a multi-year project. Uh, uh, in this specific year, it was still underway. In itself, uh, fell victim of the suspensions of the works uh, under the COVID 19 regulations and, and it's still underway. And the other project in the province of Obo um, that is not yet completed, it's uh, that in Tabazimbi uh, because there were uh, delays as far as uh, project participation is concerned, and as well as the, uh, the whole issue of, you know, of the designs because what we do as national department we don't only enforce aspect of compliance with the standard 
the point of view. We encourage municipality not to be learned experience. We encourage municipality after the making the designs, they must submit those because we don't see. And often I'm not across those situations where we'll then have to ask them to do certain things and ensure that we that compliance. And those 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 processes uh, uh, Northern Cape, uh, of the four allocated, it was only three uh, that was uh, uh, that is that was not implemented because it was not even started uh, uh, because allocation was returned to uh, the national treasury. Or I should say, uh, the, the primary reason for that was that they submitted a business plan for uh, ten town. I think it was Berserk. And then upon the receipt of the money, uh, they wanted to go and implement the project in a different way. And um, when they submitted uh, a project, but this is not what you approved for. But over and above that, uh, these are the reasons why we cannot approve you for. Or sometimes I would like you to say, from your own funding of MIG, not this one, allocate. We had already uh, implemented project X or project Y. We do not understand as to why you would want to go of the project that was approved. So that's basically the situation. And then with regard to Northwest, my game, uh, it is the same reason that I've already advanced and uh, multi year projects. And then uh, you then have uh, the trouble. The project was completed. The project was completed, but uh, the, the unfortunate it is not yet used primarily because of there are no connections in terms of water and a matter that the municipality uh, uh, is dealing with, just like in the, in the beautiful facility, but it could not be con uh, connected to the main lines in terms of, uh, uh, but the, the process is also and the last one is financial data that was not completed. It's my summer. That is significant progress in that. Okay. Which is next. Next. Uh, in 21, 22, uh, uh, that's the, 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 the main summary here, uh, 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 person and honorable members to avoid to have written a, a longer uh, story. Looking at the financial year of 21-22, the last financial year, uh, uh, honorable members would see when we go to this uh, below that many of the projects uh, also delayed in terms of the expression of the, of the municipalities delayed in terms of expression of their projects. But they are only at the point and some procurement of consultants. Uh, others, the consultants already designed of the, of the contractors for the actual implementation. Uh, it's normally some of the delays that we do and contact forever. <clears throat> Over time, we're going to realize that although we have some of these delays, but at the municipality point of the, uh, by finishing this project. We can scroll further down. Okay, as far as Machabin uh, uh, is concerned, uh, they had they had procured and uh, and they have also appointed the contract, but only at the time when the contractor was supposed to have it signed. Then Machabin indicated the contract had to stop because they do not have money. We had allocated them uh, seven million, and I think they have used. 500 or less, uh, and then up almost 6.5 left. It's actually meant for them. It was a surprise to us. We are following up with the municipality. We still try to secure uh, the meeting with them to try and understand when they stop the project. There's no money. Where is the money? Because the money is supposed to be there. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as far as uh, Northern Cape is concerned, uh, Person. Sianuma again, uh, 
uh, comes, um, although uh, absolutely no uh, uh, municipality that has implemented or completed the project, uh, but with the three municipalities, I thought that it's important that those matters must be noted. Danuma uh, was given the same allocation again. And again, when we were given an impression that the matter of Sandra was cited, at the point of accountability in terms of uh, level of movement, that reason, we don't know if it was opportunistic or what, was again cited as one of the reasons. But over and above that, the acting MM there, uh, who happened to be the director, I think had indicated the whole issue of lack of capacity within the municipality to inadequate human resource. Him also assumed the responsibility of MMS meet. Uh, is work very difficult if the necessary this project in Rechtersfeld. Uh, Rechtersfeld wanted to do the same thing uh, that Kaima did uh, and uh, 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 the other municipality of, of splitting uh, the resources uh, thinly uh, amongst four towns. We allocated a facility for Bornolo, uh, but precisely because of back and forth, uh, due to, to that dynamic, they ended up also their money being taken back. And then the Khatoun, Zanzibar, and Khatelope, the projects at the construction stage, uh, but were, were delayed uh, by the operation and procurement process. And then uh, as far as Western Cape and uh, Northwest are concerned, uh, reasons are similar to that uh, that have been provided, with, but I'm sure the list uh, and then it will then be indeed you can pass. Um, my apologies, I, I see it, I see it still saying 21, 22. Uh, I don't know whether it was to say 22, 3 in that title date is supposed to say 23. I apologize. Uh, but these are the projects uh, that are allocated in the current financial year. And uh, it is basically reflected there uh, that they are scheduled for completion by 2023. Uh, so uh, I'm sure only uh, at the end of um, financial year, we should then be able to give it, you know, how they have progressed as far as their completion is concerned. Least people would also then of the uh, allocation financially. We can go to the side. Next slide, please. Yes, that, that is that is basically uh, those specific details. Chapter seven, twenty-two. Uh, we can. Yes, Chair, we are now nearing the end. Uh, Chairperson, uh, that, is, that is the summary of the performance since uh, But these are the following challenges that we wanted to know. In this specific slide, uh, we noted the challenge, uh, we noted uh, from this experience the whole issue and the 5% the, the issue of the MIG in totality, not only the reinvest aspect of it, the whole issue of the misuse of the MIG. Uh, where and for sports facilities doesn't always go for sports facilities. We have just recently interacted with some of the project implementation plans, which are the plans of the municipalities. So we listing all the projects that they are going to implement with their MIG. Now, what is supposed to be included in those specific lists? I'm talking about not MIG, because it delivers also other types of infrastructure. 5% of those specific amounts must go to sports facilities, and therefore you would expect a, a, a list or an indication of a sports facility that would be implemented as part of the project implementation plan. There are a number of municipalities, I must say, uh, where there is no end indication of uh, such a project. That means the 5% meant for sports facilities would then be directed towards other youth. And that's a big problem. But we also have instances, Chairperson, uh, whereby even the money that we allocate ourselves, irrespective of the fact that it's a rent-based amount, when it gets to a municipality, the municipality happens by any chance 
not to have enough money to be able to pay for its uh, operations, including salaries. I myself, as a former employee of the municipality, at some point I was paid a salary with money from MIG. The problem about that is when money needed to get into the project for stimulus implementation, there's no money available. And that is why in some instances we also encounter some of these significant delays as fight for the project. And municipalities do not always come honest. We have a challenge of poor contract management. Even when there are defaults on the side of the contractors themselves, municipalities, either they do not sign proper contracts or they are not uh, able to enforce those contracts accordingly. And, and that in itself impacts negatively on the project. Uh, we lose funds, a lot of funds, Chairperson, I must say, even these ones that we allocate through the rentals, through the process of stop and reallocation, which is a correct process. One must indicate that when the municipality is not performing on a project, um, and I'm speaking about MIG in totality, unfortunately, uh, when, when COCTA says by December, you should have at least spent uh, if my memory says to me, well, 40% of the tranches that we have been allocated. Uh, otherwise, we are going to take a certain portion of your money. And, and when that happens, uh, what would fall victim often than not? It is the very same reinforced allocation that we have allocated as this. And we lose it, unfortunately, other projects. It's not like when a specific amount is harvested from this project as part of re, uh, stopping and reallocation. And that money will be redirected towards another sports project elsewhere. It completely gets out of our control. It's solely the decision of COPA. How will that money be distributed? And then we end up losing the money. But regardless of that, we still expect the municipality at some point to finish on the basis of the original allocation that we have. So this is this now somehow becomes a burden also to the municipality rather than being a blessing as a cause of science. So our interest also is to see if we will not be included in that process. Ensure that when money of sport is taken from land, then redirected it towards another sports project that is performing elsewhere. Um, also, the, the issue of the decline of, of, of some of the project on, based on the reasons I've indicated. Remember, there was an issue of a school site in Gamisberg, as well as the issue of what I can call a social cohesion site. Uh, in, in, in Langeberg, uh, for us even today, uh, those, re those reasons were not justifiable enough. And uh, I think they chose not to take into consideration a particular logic that is part of uh, the priorities and the objectives of government. Next slide, please. Uh, other than that, Chair, in terms of uh, the, the challenges, I, I spoke to that matter of Langeberg already. There is an, also an issue of a decrease in terms of the ring fenced amount. Uh, it was 300 million where we are, we're at a 250. With an influx of applications that we are getting uh, from municipalities, uh, some are municipalities that have already benefited. Of course, we've got few that have not benefited but would not necessarily apply. But long and short is that this money has proven itself to be inadequate, particularly with types of projects we're implementing in Polowani, as well as in, 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 in Mahike. And Chair, like we said, uh, 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 part of the things we want to do is to encourage other provinces and, and other sporting courts to identify other, other provinces to be their capital. And then we go there and build facilities that would be uh, suitable to also host certain international events that were then able to use those investments for purposes of sport tourism in development at line. So the 300 million, which is now 250, it's not necessarily assisting us in that regard. There's also an issue of a level of enforcement of the 5%. And when you go to the free state and every single municipality there, have in their project implementation plan, you will find a sports facility because they are deliberate and intentional enforcing that aspect. Submit an implementation plan as a municipality for expenditure of your MIG in total, and it does not reflect sports facility and allocate the minimum of 5% of your total MIG. They do not approve it. Uh, yes, Houghton is doing well. Uh, Eastern Cape, quite a number of them do have 
implementation plans, but there are those municipalities, Chairperson, uh, that have that do not have uh, projects, that do not have sports facility projects, which in itself it means it's an issue of reform by chance when it's supposed to be uh, 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 an intentional issue consistently with the provision of the MIT framework that is supposed to be enforced equally by that's like two states. It has provided us a very good model. And then the whole issue of limited capacity within our own provinces, uh, because they also have a role to ensure that they keep on monitoring these um, projects. But the problem is that we do not have people with the adequate technical capacity to monitor these projects. Because even the project of Sasolbeck of 21 or 27 million, the project that was also in the news of NOP, those projects were recommended by our political counterparts which then means for beyond that, they then have an obligation to follow up implementation of the projects because they are the end user beneficiary, those specific But once they have given a recommendation letter, that way it ends, the municipality can do as it pleases. And unfortunately at National, we are not able to pick up some of those projects because that process does not involve us. The only projects we have been to work on are those that we allocate, and that is why we're even able to follow them up until their point of completion. Whether it started in 1617 and it's not completed, we still at the end, we do get value for the investment that we would have made in that regard. Uh, next slide, please. Then, in terms of the recommendations, Chair, uh, we, we are working with COPTA in this regard, Chair, but we do not have a signed MOA. Few years ago, when we were still SRSA, we had drafted an MOA so that we strengthen the relation uh, in such a way that we would then be able to mitigate some of these problems that we were dealing with, problems of proper reporting, problems of not using money allocated for sports for other things and so on. And we felt that uh, uh, this space, uh, since it is primarily regulated by we need to have that uh, a uh, relationship with them through the MOA. But unfortunately, Chairperson, uh, that, that has not happened. Even aspects of uh, the reallocation of funds uh, uh, taken from the non-performing project, like I indicated, that it represents a loss to us as if those funds are not reallocated to other sports facilities, but directed to other uses. So MOA would, among others, or rather among others, the recommends the kind of relationship to avoid that. And then the issue of, we, we, we recommend Jefferson that those conditions in the MIT conditional framework that prevent delivery of sport facilities in school sites because they are government owned, as well as the social cohesion sites. Uh, most of it there is a consensus also in the community. Uh, uh, such conditions uh, should somehow be tempered with because these sites are perceived as uh, sites that meet facial developmental as well as social uh, uh, transformation sense, but also financial sense. Because why would we build in school and just outside the school, we build the same thing that we have built in school when we can build uh, at the site and, and allow the share model service uh, between the community as well as the school, particularly when there's a consensus within the community about that kind of an approach. And then the whole issue chair of uh, increase of 400, of the current 200, million to 400 million, primarily because we want to expand and, uh, and increase the scale of delivery. Uh, there's a lot of money that we are losing uh, because of some money is directed towards other things, but also because of the wastage that is happening. Sasolbeck is an example we have cited. Inokumikijima is an example that we have cited, uh, primarily because of uh, some of these municipalities that implement Sports project through their own funding, not this one that is invest method. Uh, they do exactly those cases that have been reported in the meeting. And those two are still represent a loss to the sector in terms of increasing opportunities for because such is not possible with other facilities. And then the whole issue of enforcement must not be left at the mercy of anyone. It must be enforced through COCTA, each and every single project. No PIP or project implementation plan should be approved by COCTA unless it reflects the use of the 5% towards sports facilities. And then uh, the other issue is uh, uh, the, the, the building. 
uh, increasing capacity within our provincial department so that they get to be able to follow up the projects that they themselves have recommended, but over and above that to prepare themselves that upon completion of this program, they will then come with facilities because we do have a number of municipalities facilities capacity that have been completed and then they end up being deteriorating uh, out of the whole issue of them not being used. And that in itself is a reflection of lack of programs from ourselves as a sector that we will build these facilities, but when we're supposed to follow through with implementation of the programs, we are not being adequate. And that is primarily the competence of province. And that is why even sports development grant, much of it is given to them. It is exactly for that. Uh, Chairperson, I think this was the last slide, if I'm not mistaken, and thank you very much um, to Chairperson, Honorable Chair, and Honorable Members. Um, well, thanks so much. Uh, this report, which we've read, uh, we didn't sleep. It made us to have sleepless nights, uh, especially uh, on what is going on uh, with this reinforcing money. And um, I'm suspecting that honorable members will be reflecting that some, sometimes uh, our names will be changed to be uh, make names because we've been fighting uh, uh, this fight. I, were not winning. Uh, honorable members, uh, now I'm suspecting that uh, let me take uh, hands uh, uh, in order to <coughs> at least must, when we're having a cut off, a uh, lot shedding uh, will be interacting, and then your, your salga and AG will answer questions uh, directed uh, upon this. This report, it does cover what we are doing and what we are not doing, monitoring and whatever. So we will be uh, amongst uh, people. Uh, those sections of provide the overall summary. Uh, I can't understand who's speaking you are going to assist in responding in some of the questions. I'm having Honorable Mwathingosi. I'm having Honorable Adams. I'm having Honorable Zondi. I'm having Honorable uh, Sibia. Along, Mama, you must wait when I'm finished. I'm still on the platform. You can't do so, that. Sorry, my love. Okay. Uh, Honorable Sibia, Honorable Malomani, Honorable Makaula, Honorable uh, Joseph. I see. Oh, Wahamba. Mm, I wish that. <laughs> Lord Shady. Lord Shady. <laughs> okay, let's try, honorable members. Mm. Let's switch all our, our vetoes and whatever. Maybe we'll survive. I don't know. I don't know if I'm and goes the chairperson, the teller Unga Veli, Champion of La Seg. Yes, yes, yes. Mandibulele, with the presentation, even though if you get late, what is the reason? Slally, the account, but the chairperson gave it in a footy. So Zaga Legan just in a lalukuba about being a Funugu, Sebens Abona, but to me, ladies and those Abongo Suk. Chairperson. Honorable Martin was with 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 respect. If any other department gets it, thank Chaperson, you. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Chaperson, um, 
in October 2021, residents of Illicitian Village, Ekomani, where Inoxondonga municipality built a short stadium for 15 million, while the residents in Zakona have to travel 15 kilometers to get water. Uh, that has been happening for 15 years. Imagine a stadium without water, Chairperson. What is the department got to say about such wasteful expenditure and disrespect that our people have to face every day? Chairperson, what is actually happening with the HMP stadium? The last time this committee had oversight, uh, Chairperson, um, the department was at uh, odds over the, devol the demolition cost payment due to Uma Caesar General Services. Um, the company that was contracted to demolish. Uh, so present Tswane residents are still angry uh, because Landa is, is, is being uh, taken over by uh, drug addicts and causing mayhem among the committee of, of my melody. Um, since the portfolio committee has not been doing the oversight, Chairperson, what is really happening with the unfinished projects that are supposed to be uh, you know, bringing relief to e residents of Mamelod. Chairperson, what is the department's thoughts um, and plans of dealing with the construction mafias like Leise Mamelod, Ipoko Haram? Uh, Chairperson, after the contract was given in December on the 15th of 2021 uh, to have this uh, you know, uh, project be finished, what has transpired so far regarding the, the progress on the stadiums rebuilt? W.L. Chairperson. And go see, and honorable member. The next uh, member is honorable Adams. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And my greetings uh, to all on the platform, the Minister, DM, and the department. Chairperson, let me also welcome the late receiving presentation, but at least we have an idea what is happening in the municipalities. Chairperson, my question, um, my question will be in light of the very real threat of vandalism and theft from facilities has a department with the relevant stakeholders conducted an assets, assessment, assessment of the security needs at the sporty team. And then chairperson, the next one has the department done a study to understand why this eventually became white elephants, if so, how? Uh, and then chairperson, uh, my following question, um, in areas where funds, where the sport component of the MIG grant is underspent, does the na National Treasury not involve the department in supporting the projects which can be undertaken to avoid underspending? And um, the last one, Chairperson, how is the department working with municipalities to spend on sports beyond the MIG grant, which is a sign of non-performance? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank, thank you, you, Chairperson. Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Honorable Zondi. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to the uh, 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 to you and the and, our, and all our colleagues in the meeting. Uh, 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 we were again about Saloti Africa late, but this one, a thing of Figanga late to say Mugera water because they are, they are related uh, to one uh, mission. Uh, we, we welcome uh, uh, the presentation. Chair, one question the, the first one uh, How is the department 
uh, dealing with the dysfunctionality of municipalities in the, in, in, in the implementation of May project because uh, some of the uh, municipalities are dysfunctional. So if the municipality is dysfunctional, it is difficult to implement uh, the project uh, on the time uh, allocated to them. That's the first one. The second one, Chair, is with the <clears throat> uh, environment impact assessment. What is the cause of delays because of the environmental uh, impact assessment? How do you plan to deal with the, with, 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 with the which has been the factor uh, for decades? Um, in fact, uh, in, in, in most municipalities, especially those municipalities in rural areas, uh, are affected by uh, environmental impact assessment. Is it because it, 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 it is a lack of forward planning or what? And how to deal with it uh, moving forward, Chair? The third one, Chair, what efforts have you put in place with all the stakeholders to avoid the disruption or violence caused by Amadela Gokbon in all infrastructure programs? The last one, Chair, <clears throat> the department received a direct allocation of 250 million and they make 4.5% is equivalent to 252 million. Between the two allocations, which ones perform the better? Yeah, well, sir. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Uh, uh, Honorable Sibia. Thanks, Chairperson. Siabonga, I'm a presentation. Uh, uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, what is the department doing to ensure that a higher variety of supporting codes are introduced in historical disadvantaged areas as opposed to netball and soccer being the most common codes? The other one, what percentage of infrastructure supported since the inspection of the MIG has fallen into a state of this disrepair. Uh, dis Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable uh, Sibia. Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to our DM, our staff, Honorable members, and everyone that is present in the meeting. Chair, let me also welcome the presentation from the department. Uh, Chair, my, my question, the first question, it will be based on the issue of the lack of enforcement of the 5%. So I just want to check what are the reasons for the non-enforcement of the 5% of the MIC earmark for sports infrastructure. So maybe they will tell us what are the challenges that they, they are seeing. The other thing is that as U Comrade Adams, or oh, as Honorable Adams have said about the issue of vandalism and the issue of theft, of theft, these are the threats from facilities that has the department with relevance. Did the department with relevant stakeholders sit down and think maybe to put maybe a security? Because we can see that there is a security need if there is vandalism and theft in those sporting facilities. The other matter that I would like to support on the on the on their report is that the report from the EPG that recommends the focus of delivery of sports facilities in schools because we know where the talent starts. It will be based in the schools so that they can see the kids. They can start as young as they are if they can build maybe those sports facilities, but not only the soccer and netball facilities with other sports and court. Also, there's a, I, I'm, I'm also requesting, uh, I think it's, it's Le Bohan, to one day to come and visit Matibid area. In Matibid area, when I did e, e oversight, there is nothing, there's no sports ground, there's, there's no facility, whether it's at school, anywhere, there's no facility. Sports facilities, they're not there. So I, I wish if maybe they can come and visit that area in my constituents 
which is Matiwit. I would really appreciate. And we'll really appreciate if maybe they can try and put for them maybe uh, a sports ground. If Because if I can say uh, a sports ground, maybe for them it will be something else for the schools. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malomane. Uh, Honorable Makalima. Makaula, I'm sorry. Honorable Makaula. Mama Kaula. Honorable Joseph. Honorable Van Dijk. Good morning, Chair. Um, Honorable. Okay. May I continue, Chairperson? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for the presentations. Good morning to all. Um, <clears throat> Chairperson, I, I want to just uh, follow up on, on the question that Member Madnigosi asked when he referred to the to the HM Pitchy Stadium. Um, now I know the department told us that it is the it is it is the responsibility of the of the municipality, you know, to start this and their plans. But I also um, still maintain that this, there was another stadium, I can't recall the name, it was a legacy project that, uh, of the 2010. And of course, the stadium is in the face of being demolished. So I think we should at least get the feedback, the feedback there. Um, Chairperson, um, I think I am concerned about the unspent money. All the plans in place projects in place there is a it's a lot of unspent unspent money uh, i think i read, read on seven slide seven about 17.21 billion mm -hmm. not spent and i share the concern as the other members have asked about the um vandalism theft security extortion um extortion is a big thing uh, um, in in the in the construction industry relating to those projects for, for stadiums. Um, Chairperson, I would like to know, um, um, question I want to ask, if if the municipalities where these theft uh, vandalism take place, um, if they budget for security, uh, even afterwards, I've been to the softball state-of-the-art stadium here in Cape Town last week, um, and uh, all that security lights, three million spent is gone. They, you know, this this the damage vandalism to that stadium is is disappointing, and public money have to be spent out to to repair that facility. Um, so yes, it is a national crisis. I think of vandalism and theft and extortion. Um, my, my question is if the municipalities now uh, will have to include in their budget security to protect our, our uh, um, all these billions spent on, on infrastructure and uh, allowing the community to, to have sports facilities. The, I want to share the, the, the view about the dysfunction, dysfunctional municipalities now. For me, it's, it's about um, if they are not able to to, to manage their finances, their in treasury, and, and our department must come in to, 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 to determine whether we must proceed. At the same time, um, we, we can't punish the community if a municipality is dysfunctional, chairperson. We may have to look at other options between treasury and the department, getting that facility there, because that may even change the, the, the community. Um, um, to become a better community, uh, if there if there is a development facility, um, Chairperson, I I would like to um, the comment the comments about the sites um, uh, through the presentations um, that doesn't belong to the municipality. There must be examples of where 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 the province of any province in sports, arts, and culture, or any municipality. Um, and uh, forms a partnership with the school because there are schools with big grounds but it's not it's underutilized. So there must be public-private partnership examples where where a sport facility can be put on a on a school property because it is government property. It's not private property. 
So I fail to understand why we can't have these public-private partnerships and that we had to go through lengthy legal processes and administrative processes just to um, to 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 make sure the 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 property belongs to the municipality. If it belongs to the government, it must be a partnership between the spheres of government for the benefit of 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 the community and chairperson. Um, <clears throat> And, and yes, I, I appreciate all the, the number of projects that is all over in the country, but uh, it, it is clear from the presentation, Chairperson, there's, there's, there's big challenges. Um, but I think this was a presentation and a meeting we were waiting for for a, for a long time because we believe from our committee side and in government side that, that this is probably one of the biggest <clears throat> opportunities that we have in government to change the community around, to take a community forward and particularly the youth by developing this facility, building a sports facilities, and in, as in the pre presentation was said, to promote social coercion and nation building. Um, that's my comment for now, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, Joseph. Honorable Van Dijk. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank, thank you also for the presentation. Sorry, I was um, <clears throat> kicked out of the meeting for a while, uh, because of the load shedding, and I hope I don't repeat myself. Um, I agree with most of what I heard from my colleague, Honorable Dennis. Um, I, I want to go to a few slides. Slide three, um, it says that the project was stopped or cancelled. And I want to know, I'm not sure if I missed that, how much was paid out to this project, and I want to know whether there is any accountability. Slide four, it says that uh, 27, 16, 17 allocations in the Eastern Cape it's still under investigation. I want to know how that is possible, that after seven years, it is still under investigation. Uh, on slide four, the same slide, KZN, um, I want to find out whether these contractors uh, that that uh, do not uh, keep to the contract, are they red flagged by the municipality? Is there databases um, that the department and the municipality keep of contractors that are not uh, honoring the contracts. Um, and I also want on that specifically, I want to know um, the contract by the municipalities and is there any oversight role uh, this is by the department money has been allocated as it is allocated from the department. Um, slide uh, five, it, 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 it reflects on the Northern Cape. Um, and I want to know whether the department do pre-checks. How does the monitoring and evaluation of the department works on these money monies that they um, made a, make available for uh, these projects? Um, on slide nine, 2017-18, uh, that summary, um, it says that the free state that uh, that uh, co contractor had financial challenges. My question is. Um, in the first place, who monitored that project, but also how was that he approved in the first place that, that contractor if he um, if he had uh, financial challenges? And then slide nine, it says that in Mpumalanga, and um, I wonder if we can get maybe an update of that on that investigation. Slide ten, um, the. Eastern Cape 162, that project, it says that only 50% of the project was completed and 9.2 million was um, given to the contractor. I want to know if that was the full amount of the contract value. And then I also want to ask what are the compelling reasons um, as to why sports facilities cannot be built in public schools uh, through the MIG funds and um, given that the schools are in need of a sport infrastructure and how this matter can be overcome. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Fontek. Honorable Tully. Honorable Tully. Ndiya <laughs> Is I think it's in the 2016, before 
the project is really in Kali, ground, Nama Sports Center, Kanjan, Inga Pili, Ubewata, Koka, Minyaga Yonke, Mawensek, Kungani, Uti Inga Pili, Anga Pili, Lama Project, Lange, Mamadela, was Luna in the South Coast. Sine project lane in the Minyaga, Inga Pizu, but a Uglanea Kalo, Umbuzulenga, Ubuz, what you are exopex is so good when the Raja. No good, he pay a pelanini the project to the was of sickness, especially with South Coast, Muslanga South Coast. Yabong Yabonga and Clonisha and Mamoshe and Slegas, a honorable Shongo. Thank you, Chairperson. We welcome the presentation. Chair, I wanted to find out, I think we note that the uh, MIC project, it's in a mess. In fact, the whole MIC is in a mess. Since I started in this committee uh, eight years ago, we've been talking about it. And I wanted to find out, especially with the incomplete work, failure of projects and everything, how best can the department take the responsibility to build sporting infrastructure away from municipality. It is clear that the municipality has failed dismally. And maybe another question, what is the role of a sports trust in the infrastructural uh, provision? What is the role of a sports trust in the infrastructural provision? And lastly, Chair, I think we usually talk about this the, the municipalities are failing to, to implement the IDP when, for an example, one honorable member wanted to say in the area that he works so or she works, there are no stadium or that, there are no grounds. But if there's IDP uh, plans for that project or a stadium or anything, why the municipalities are failing? And where is intergovernmental relation between national province and local? Is it working or is it failing? Thank you very much for now. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Sabotage. Was I yes, you were, but I think oh. the chair has been affected by by load shedding. I have a feeling. Uh, yeah. I'm back now. Do you hear me? Oh. Yes, we can. Uh, yes, we okay. can. Hey, Musa Tamisa, Okom Kakusila, Ilifa, a Nyanga, you tell this in to them. Um, you, you, you know, uh, I, I do feel uh, about. What can a department do? And, and as Honorable uh, Joseph was saying, when are we going to do e oversight? I'm suspecting uh, it's not wrong. We do oversights. And as I'm speaking, uh, I'm worried about the, the Northern Cape. We wanted to go there. Uh, if you look at Northern Cape, in all financial years, uh, Nothing is, is being finished, and it, 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 it's a worrisome thing. And I wish that maybe we can again try to motivate. Uh, I'll, I'll ask the, the committee uh, secretaries to motivate that uh, because of this report. Again, uh, we, are, um, we want to motivate that we want to go. Uh, in two provinces, maybe the the, not, the Northern Cape and Pumalanga again to go there. But the problem is that uh, we can go there, but if there's no willing uh, of these people, but we cannot know to go. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the department uh, and, and this new, new MOU. You, you see, it's new, new MOU. There was a reason that it must be a new MOU 
because uh, it didn't work. This problem of, of sport facilities through education, let alone with the municipalities. And uh, in our last engagement with the department, uh, you did tell us that uh, two DGs are meeting uh, to sign and to fast track this new MOU. How far is that process? Also, uh, I can share uh, with the, 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 the honorable members and, and with whoever who's in this new uh, era of, of e, e, e parliament that uh, maybe we can again call these departments uh, which are supposed to be uh, take drastic measures in our department, HG, uh, uh, Copter, and I wanted to check the time that each department uh, was complaining about and also the commit 300 million. If you want us uh, that we must motivate it, that it must be 400. What are the reasons? What are we going to do? Because even if this money we have been given going to Ukokta, uh, through Usalga, and, and uh, even um, now we are seeing that the problems are still there. Uh, and uh, um, I want to check that Treasurer, one other time you uh, you were part of this collective that I'm saying maybe again, and then this time we must include the NCOP and uh, uh, about the all this when we want intergovernmental departments to come together. But my main worry, the monitoring, uh, what measures, uh, Treasurer, that you can take uh, if the the funds. Uh, are not doing what uh, is expected to do. Uh, can we have EPMFA? What is it saying about that? But the main problem is that the problem of infrastructure, the problem of e e facilities, uh, the sketch of e the sketch of EJPV, the sketch of e drugs is because sometimes. There's, there are no facilities, but the money from government is there. So I, I wanted that I must say all uh, in case I don't do uh, my closing remarks. I recommend honorable members that uh, the, our staff must write a, a special plea that we want uh, to take a visit. We, we, we waited for the, the other reports that they must come to us uh, where we've seen uh, that there are problems of monies who are uh, channeled to some municipalities which are not doing anything. Uh, I thank you. Uh, now I'm giving back uh, to DTG uh, Sumaya. Chair. Yes, oh, oh. I was going to suggest with your, with your indulgence, Chair, that probably before the uh, Department of Sport, Arts and Culture respond, let's allow Treasury and Salga to come in because some of the questions are direct, directed to them and then allow this Department of Sport to come in after them. Okay. Uh, Treasurer. Uh, thank you so much. Um, can I ask uh, Litsepa um, Pakis um, and Marvin Nakubeni to come in with some of the responses, please? Thank you. Let's be, be brief to the point. This day doesn't want Ilet Shodin because uh, with so Sorry, much. Sorry. Do you get respect? I'm busy, man. 
No, Gibonga e presentation and the chair. I must be a uh, 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 be fair to you. We are born a lender, Yama Yama Lendo, Gaga Salta, no cocta. Kinga and Kuroba Giagos or right Uti. Kuzo Funaga was the oversight to Gulababa Yamas Pado told Tabezu Lut. Even Guanaba Baba Chomba, as if Connie Day and Zegile. A chairperson. If man in Tata Manja Utangita Seham, the Sierra Corner, who's a total Zico and the Bajas, we could no manje as a gile. Depend and we are the way a chair. The Bona Lenda by your good of Funaga, who tilt Abagua and Sopi. Yes, you can see. As member of parliament of and the committee, we are born among us as poly ama MCs, Lawa Aga Sport Aga Alton Culture. Nalazi mayor to make sure Uguti. Lazi is in the school among us, Lazi Mali as in the body of the school of what runs a thousand in Mali for a thousand in Mali in Gululis. But all good as Zenzi Lutopaz. We are going to get my school among a background. A good day. Gangan and Jemama Wam, Zolega, there's no translation. Kubelega game, ma'am. We are going to give us school. Yes, love. If a school among a god, Minam Fonis is always with Pugu Pugulan. I'm a spot awake. I'm a crowd. A good day. I work. I'll get the corner like a winning and cover over farm with it. Who cocked a utula, then a salka. Oh, well, my goodness, all the doors of two are managing. I'm not a conference. That's not a corner. I'm a government. I'm a government. So a parliament. Oh, good. Okay, sorry, and you have a look at the other But got a chair. Agufanele mabeza la we portfolio committee. Beze, beze, luguti bona bazo fika ba hite, batunga, batunga, batunga. Easy in this nest, tina siya yanza le tokti oversight, ga le kuto ze si pume mwagwe parlament. Wea wana nje mangweze la manje, kunenda ola na otu klola konuguti. Abagwa zaanga, uwenza, umsebezu, wabumbuzo amuti. Easy in pizi, zinyate lo bona, baba tatele zona. Go on. Ibona Ganyotina as a member of parliament of the National Good. Sifuno Salka, no culture, Sibona Lessons in those implement egg. La Paguna Macansen. Aguma sports. Gisua for Nelu Abigail and Yang King as a mascot, Agazi Lud. Combisa Kornu Gutilana Tina Soros Hedilan. Singers, Ukrainian don't generally know what a cocktail pen or wood. A comprehensive and and Bazon is a scholar still crowned in the scissors and people at the Genie disaster. Sabonga, ma'am. Sabonga, ma'am. Gibuya Lana Rabaton of the Fanel Yenzi. Nina Bazo Yens. Oh, what can I get to Yabong? Ogotina ilo kuge kunugush. Lana ukopta in diazi yo, uku salka, salka. Ama cancer was one nigga zayo a chance ma wotela. A du guja, awa nigga zama pek. Aga pegu gutum sebezi, aya wenza ina. Yenu kob, aga hamba, buya stand on a pati jombe, ati enda wene tizen, buya kona nako wenzu wenga lesi man. Nati la basi nigga zilaba pek, tinage la pezu, lebe yenu nigga zilaba bani mabo, wenzu 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 Okay, Mamma, 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 
Mshaka 29, aka October. Kuzo beguna lento ya makansha la pia ingo nyama yetu. Izo binigezwa istifgeto kusemte tuwele. Asa nga bama rapa skembu. Kutuwa siga makansha kusiga makansha. Kutuwa sibona gali si pati nipasela la. Giyatela uguti nati. Mbona gali la nati siya la payani. To make sure everything. Eye nze gala nati siya pasipeita gion. Giyabonga. Giyabonga mamu. Thank you the so much. Mm-hmm. The last point the late Jefferson <laughs> supported. I must be implemented. Your man is in the same school. I'm going to go to the ANC. Oh, I'm going to go to the ANC. 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 I'm going to Kitesi ya guswa mama. Kuna ya kuna nyesho yu kutumisha 29 October. Kwa wabia kutuwa yu. Ay mama kawula mama kawula. Gipe ngipe iskati. Na ane ni komite kuna kani mwana kani di hile lapa ya. Mama kawula. Kwa wabati kasa mama kawula. Supinda. Iti komite siku zwile. Baya isaporta lendu nyesho yu. Kutuwa yu nante kutumi ni kwa wako lapu ma. Oh, eh, Wendy, Wendy. Um, Honorable Chair. Yes. Um, I think Wendy had had asked that I deal with some of the questions before she yeah. come. Yes, uh, yes. No, I was calling her because I wanted that. Uh, she must give you chance to talk. Let's see. Like is. Okay. Ewe onarebo chengu. Like is. Okay. And thank you very much to, to you and the honorable members. I, I think I also should just appreciate the, the level of detail also from the presentation we received from our colleagues in the department. Ah. Uh, 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 DAC, yeah, um, and also the, the level of detailed uh, comments and questions we received from the committee. So I'm, I'm going to deal with a few honorable members, and I just want to perhaps provide a, a little bit of more detail. So the issue of why the MIG funds cannot be, uh, cannot fund the sports projects that are in places like schools is not a framework issue, but, but an issue of a MIG policy, uh, which uh, the Department of Cooperative Government would then be better placed uh, at, at, at commenting or speaking to it. Uh, but, but I want to agree with one member who has stated how unusual it is for a project, especially for a sports project, uh, to take more than seven years uh, to, be, to be finalized. So this is really uh, unusual and, and it makes it difficult uh, for one to then make a recommendation for additional resources um, because I do note that there was a comment around uh, additional funds uh, that would then need to be put in terms of this um, sports component which is earmarked or ring fence for sports facilities in the MIG. Um, and then the issue of, uh, I think, the, the 5% allocation in terms of the enforcement around that. Uh, I think, honorable members, I think, uh, honorable Martin Gose did mention some of the issues um, that are faced by uh, the residents within municipalities in terms of the, the, the water and, and sanitation, which are really by... I think the constitution in terms of the Bill of Rights, a, a right a, to, to the communities. Um, and and MIG as a general purpose grant is a grant that goes to municipalities to allow them to, to, to then be in a position to respond to the needs of the communities that are identified through the, the ITP processes. And, and I do appreciate it that the, the committee has vested interest in the sports component of it. Um, just to say, maybe I think, in, especially in the recent past with all the uh, 
I don't know, but, uh, I'm thinking of it doing, doing now, but there's been a, a number of instances of unrest within municipalities where municipal, uh, municipal residences have been uh, calling for, you know, an improvement in terms of the basic services. Um, and, and, and one of the issues that, you know, we then find is that there's a rigorous process that all the sector departments are expected to participate in where they then inform the allocations um, that are then made from the MIG uh, using the ITP as the main source of the, the projects that have been identified by the communities. And, and our assessment really and the report that we have received is that um, where there is lack of capacity which is what uh, Lebohang has indicated in the provincial level, that there's lack of capacity to play a meaningful role in these processes, then you would then see um, that, you know, there would be less of prioritization of these uh, sports uh, 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 projects from that 5% of the MIG, which is unfortunate, but it does mean that, you know, there should be concerted effort really from the national department side, but also um, from the uh, you know the provincial count from their provincial counterparts and decal to then try and play a meaningful role in 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 uh, in looping municipalities to 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 increase the investment uh, from the the five percent allocation. Our indication though uh, is that the municipalities are actually spending more than what has been indicated um, in the in so so one of our slides on our members was going to speak to how the allocations are looking for uh, the financial year, which is the 22 23. And, and, and what we picked up is that, you know, whilst the municipalities are meant to spend around 700 a million uh, of the MIG, uh, which would constitute around 5%. Uh, they do spend more than that. But but again, the issue there is um, we cannot, in terms of quality checks, that's where the department of, of um, I think the department that is responsible for the sports component uh, of, of the MIG would then have to play a role in terms of assessing whether those are indeed um, being spent efficiently uh, and effectively because we do have those issues where there is a uh, where, where the prices have been uh, 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 escalated for for no for no good reason really. Um, so so we do acknowledge that there are issues in the in the system in terms of lack of prioritization, but but also I think. Um, uh, there they should be an appreciation that without a full staff complement in terms of capacity at a national and at a provincial level, it's going to be difficult for municipalities to make these uh, uh, decisions. And, and it would be, I think, unfair to then expect COPTA to play that role when there's also the support that comes with each allocation. So for each of these sectors that play a meaningful role there, they should be in a position to provide, you know, a master plan as well, as well as some of the guiding principles in terms of what, what the funds can be spent on and what they can't be spent on. We do have an issue where um, the, the municipalities find themselves being uh, exploited by the service providers because there's no necessary guidance that is coming uh, from the policy setting uh, institutions. Um, and, and the other issue, I think it was raised by, by Honorable Adams in terms of, you know, issues around white elephant vandalism and theft, you know, so, so some of those, those issues really emanate where you start to build a infrastructure uh, in, in areas where people are not appreciating a, a, that, that kind of an, an infrastructure, and then they would then vandalize it. And, and we've also seen, I think, as government that there is, I think from our, our initial response is to continue to build, but in our building these infrastructure assets, there's often a problem of maintenance. Uh, that is often not catered for. So as MIG is an infrastructure 
um, a, a grant. Uh, so there needs to be a, a, a an effort that is made uh, both from national, uh, but also from municipalities to then be in a position to uh, uh, maintain these assets. And we find that when these decisions are made at a national level, there is lack of ownership at a municipal level to then take uh, these projects forward. So they always see it as, oh, well, you know, national will come build again. So that lack of uh, maintenance does, does mean that, you know, even those uh, facilities that we already have are not properly uh, then uh, are maintained. Um, so, so those are, are just some of the issues, uh, honorable members, that you know we we'll want to, to to report to you uh, uh, on, and, and also maybe just as a general comment to issues around why it's taking so long and some of the procurement uh, uh, delays that make you know this process to appear quite cumbersome because I know most of you are thinking, I mean, it's just sports facilities, how difficult, you know, can one uh, 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 find in, 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 in delivering in those. And, and, and what we are finding is that, and we think this is a safe space, you know, so it's, it's, it's uh, we can be honest with each other here with the department um, uh, that, that, that is responsible for, for this, uh, main component is that there has been a a capacity challenges so when we initiated and started this pro process there was funding which was 24 a million over that mtf uh, 2016 mtf which was meant to assist uh, uh, the department to then build its own internal capacity for it to be able to play a meaningful role, ensuring that it plays the support role uh, and, and, and fast tracking these projects. Uh, but as of last late last year, really, um, the, the, there were still some capacity constraints within the department, which makes it difficult to then, you know, conduct this thorough oversight that the municipalities uh, so 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 much need. And and as a result of that, the oversight that the department is able to uh, provide is mainly on this a dedicated component that is on the site, but there's also a dire need, you know, for the support to be provided to the general need uh, 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 that, that, you know, is provided, which means that that's, that then would be the 5%. Um, so we do urge that the department also considers, you know, capacitating itself quite fully so that we at least build a proper sports facilities, especially those that are built outside of um, this uh, mid component. Uh, just a, as a as my, my, my concluding statement, honorable chain members, uh, is that, um, the Treasury were leading a process of the grants review. So we're reviewing all the conditional grants in the system. How can we make them work better? And that includes the MIG and this component within the MIG as well. Uh, so we'll be happy to then share the findings and the, the, the reforms that will then emanate from, from, from that uh, 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 process. Um, so there won't be, I think, what what the guidelines indicated was that there shouldn't be a major changes in this financial year or in this budget because of that review that is currently taking place and all these sector departments and transferring institution, including um, the, the provinces as well, form part of, of, that, uh, of that process. Um, so, so, so yeah, so honorable, members and Jefferson, thank you for your time. I will end there for now. Thanks. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Marvin, can you then please come in on the stopping and, um, and, and withholding process? Who asked for it? How does it happen? Roles of sport, roles of um, DCOC, and role of National Treasury. Um, Marvin, over to you. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks uh, through you, Chairperson. Uh, good uh, morning uh, to the Honourable Chair and uh, members of the committee, uh, the Deputy Minister, as well as uh, the colleagues from uh, different uh, stakeholders. 
Okay, with regards to the stopping and reallocation process, uh, as uh, the the colleague from sports uh, would have indicated, uh, there's a certain criteria that is set out to say uh, where municipalities uh, fail to spend a minimum of 40% of their allocation as a a midpoint of the municipal financial year. that department can propose that a portion of that uh, municipality's allocation is stopped and reallocated to other municipalities. So an annual process that is uh, carried out with the different uh, sector departments, including uh, COPTA, leading in that process through the identification of municipalities that are underspending and uh, engaging those municipalities to say, uh, give us representations as to why you, we should not stop a portion of your money, where the municipalities would then respond and indicate uh, their reasons why the money should not be stopped. And uh, where funds are eventually stopped, uh, it's for various reasons wh- whereby the underspending could be as a result of, say, poor planning on the municipality's part or late procurement or non-procurement from municipality's part. And then uh, once the funds are stopped, the department would then recommend to say, where do they want to reallocate those monies? So in terms of the reallocation process, the monies get reallocated to municipalities that are performing well in terms of their projects. And then in terms of the reallocation, they don't necessarily look at uh, what kind of projects are uh, municipalities doing. The prerogative is, in the main is on the municipalities to decide on which uh, projects do they want to, to, to undertake with the money that they would have received through their reallocation process. So I think what I, I, wa- I may want to emphasize is that council ultimately, which is the municipal council, they are the ones that decide in terms of their priorities, in terms of which projects are they going to 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 fund? So, uh, and then also, I think uh, the other issue I want to talk about is that uh, in 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 the identification of these projects, I think in the main we also have a challenge whereby uh, municipalities have a prioritization, uh, planning, and ownership of the program as well as projects in so far as uh, sports uh, infrastructure and recreation infrastructure is concerned, whereby uh, municipalities tend to fail to timely plan as well as uh, uh, undertake proper procurement processes and implementation of projects, which leads to some of the challenges that have been alluded uh, to today. So a, a fine balance really needs to, to be found in, in that space whereby the, the planning is up to scratch and then procurement processes are also up to scratch as well as the implementation up until the finality of the project. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Thank you you very much. Yeah, um, just maybe a few concluding remarks. Um, um, I mean, the presentation that was made by um, the National Department responsible for administering the grant has pointed out to a number of challenges in the system. <clears throat> and one of the challenges in the system that we need to look at is um, the lack of operation um, and maintenance after the, the infrastructure has been put in place. And maybe one of the issues that we need to explore going forward is when we've got discussions on the conditional grant framework is to look at um, whether we cannot also require the municipality to indicate in its application, when it puts in its application for the, the, the sport facility, to also indicate how the maintenance um, issue in the long term will be dealt with. And maybe that will assist in, in some of the challenges ex, um, identified. Another challenge that really came through quite strongly is the intergovernmental um, collaboration process um, at all levels um, that is a concern. And maybe one of the issues that we need to look at as well is um, improved collaboration between um, um, the national department responsible for administering this grant and also the department that's responsible for the municipal infrastructure grant um, department of cooperative governance. And um, whether we can also not look at um, improving collaboration there um, and hopefully that will assist the program. Um, And then another issue that's also important is um, 
the collaboration between the municipality and the province concerned, because one of the key issues that came through is, is um, we, where do you place um, these um, sport facilities and some of the best locations are actually on the schools um, and how we overcome these problems. Um, and it's maybe what is required is that we, um, as the national departments involved in this process, um, see if we cannot also look at these issues and, and, and see if there's ways to, to overcome these challenges. Thanks. Thank you so much, um, Wendy. With your team, uh, Copta, Salka, Copta, Salka, Salka. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. It's Mr. Veli Kodisa from Salka. Yes, Mr. Uh, maybe I should start by, by, by making this humble request from the committee. Uh, that the, the report or the presentation made by the department is quite detailed and points to specific issues in specific municipalities. We, we think that it will only be fair for the committee that when we respond to this, we, we, we respond based on having engaged with the identified municipalities so that we can provide uh, 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 responses that are based on factual evidence that we may have collected from the mentioned municipalities. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that before that uh, that time, uh, if, the, if the committee would allow us another day when we come and present a, a detailed uh, 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 input that takes into account the input that has been made by the committee. Uh, but that, having, having said that, maybe there are some few areas where we would at a preliminary level respond. Uh, but also there are others where there are recommendations being, being made by the department that may relate to policy. In that regard, we would like when we come back, uh, if we are allowed by the committee, to also, also uh, share views, mandated views of SALCA on those proposed uh, 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 recommendations that are being made. But that as it may, we, we do note that the report paints a very dark picture. And we can't, uh, as, as, as government, uh, uh, continue in the same way that we have been doing uh, uh, and hope that things will change. So our response when we come back would have to indicate what things need to change in order for things, for this kind of picture to change at the end what processes, what systems, what policies must change. So we'll have to deal with that when we, when, 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 when we come back. Uh, on the few things that at a high level we'd like to, 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 to mention is that we think our starting point is, the, is, the, is what the constitution mandates. In terms of section 154, it mandates national and provincial government to support municipalities link that constitutional mandate to what the treasury has just indicated. That when, recognized, when we recognized that there was a need for a special uh, funding mechanism for sports facilities, that funding mechanism was linked to the department providing support to implement that particular uh, uh, funding mechanism. That is the sector department responsible for sports uh, to, 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 to support municipalities in doing that. That support cannot only be in terms of we've signed off the program, the project, go and implement and report there. That support sometimes must take into account that some of the municipalities may not have the technical capacity for that implementation, and that's where things go wrong. Hence, it becomes necessary for both the national and provincial departments to have technical capacity to help those municipalities that would have been identified for projects. Uh, to implement those projects according to the standards that are required. So, so that part, to the extent that it doesn't exist, it then does impact on how the, pro how, how, how the, how, how the, pro uh, 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 the program unfolds in implementation. So it's quite an important thing to capacitate also the national and provincial government to have the necessary technical capacity to oversee and support municipalities in the implementation. Of the, of, the, of, of the program. Secondly, once, once the, the, the facility has been created, which is the role of municipalities to create these facilities, 
there's usage of these facilities. The usage, in fact, it does lead to vandalism because when it is seen as a white elephant sitting there, no one really using it, it becomes a problem. And the users of the facilities as, as local federations, local federations are a mandate of the sports federations are a mandate of the department that it is using, it is funding in order for this to go out there and develop sports. What we really need to do is to get to a point where the federations, as the facilities are being developed, get into agreement with municipalities about how are they going to use and maintain those facilities as they are as, as, as they are using them. And as things then now, they, that, that, that link of that arm of the department of, of federations and municipalities developing facilities, clearly in many of the cases, it is not working. But beyond that, we do recognize that this then becomes an asset in the, in the asset register of the municipality. There's a need to protect that asset, even if you have given it to somebody to utilize. We are in the process of, within local government, helping municipalities to realize the need and the importance of building capacity to protect infrastructure. It is not just the sports facilities, it's the vandalism of, of water, water, water pipelines, uh, public lights, and so on and so on. There's a scourge of vandalism of, 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 of uh, municipal infrastructure and infrastructure of SOCs. SOCs. We are currently involved in, a, in, a, in, in work towards assisting municipalities to have appropriate, appropriate response mechanisms towards uh, the issue of, of protecting uh, infrastructure. In fact, in fact, today, after this meeting, uh, we will be launching one of those reports that are talking about the role of municipalities in protecting uh, uh, their infrastructure. Further, later today, we're having a meeting with the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agency. Among the things that we'll be discussing is supporting municipalities in implementation of infrastructure, infrastructure projects because that agency, which is a Department of Cooperative Governance Agency, is, is, is established specifically to assist in the implementation of infrastructure projects in municipalities. We, are, we will be taking the issues of sports facilities and what came out of this report as part of that. And when we come back, if we're allowed by the committee, will reflect also on those on 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 on, on those uh, uh, matters maybe just without taking much of your time if we are if we are allowed in terms of our request lot of many of the things that we want to raise we'll be able to package them uh, appropriately uh, uh, when we come back to to the portfolio committee to, to to give a detailed response to the presentation of the department thank you very much uh, thank you very much uh, mr colisa uh, honorable members um, I've used my power bank and everything. I'm having 26% I, before I'm giving to the department in case that uh, all my batteries uh, are going to be died. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want each department when we are responding. Uh, we once heard that uh, this question of um, capacity in the provinces and in municipalities, you once proposed that you do have specialists that they can do uh, the, 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 the work. And then it was rejected by municipalities when, if you can indicate the projects that you were doing with the less amount uh, when the provinces or the municipalities they wanted the, the, the outside people, but you, you reported to us that you have got a capacity to assist. But if I correctly so I'm remembering, they rejected some of our municipalities. I want that uh, you must respond to assist if we have a, a new leadership of a COCTA or new leadership of SALCA, they must have that information. But also, in future, uh, they can't come and um, have this information for the first time, the information from the department. I'm suspecting that uh, also Ocopta has got a role to play, let alone the, the, the national sport and the provincial uh, department of sport. Ocopta has got a, a bigger role because uh, some of the monies they, when they were referenced, they were given to Cocta. So 
I'm sorry to, the, to, to do this. I'm worried about my battery uh, uh, to you, uh, uh, DM and, and whoever is on the platform, if it's Minister DM and uh, Sumai. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, we'll hand over to Sumaya and the team uh, to respond, and then we will come in. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. Uh, and thank you, Chairperson, and uh, to the honorable members for various questions. Uh, there are some that are cross-cutting that have been asked by many of the, uh, the honorable members. So we're going to try and respond at once to some of them, and then where there's any specific issues, and we'll respond to that. Uh, Chairperson, I'm going to ask Mr. Mahuera and Mr. Patella between them to respond to some of the questions, and then I'll come in after that, and then the DM uh, can come uh, thereafter to uh, wrap up. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mahuera. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Honorable Chair again. Uh, starting right at the first question, uh, Honorable Chair asked by the Honorable uh, Mandlim Gosi, especially with regard to both in Kima as well as the MP. Uh, I had somehow also in the presentation, Chair, uh, used that example of Inokumikitima because we know that was in the media for all the wrong reasons. And, and, and uh, uh, the indication of course was that uh, this is one of the projects that although it was a thought uh, 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 project, it was not necessarily allocated specifically by the ring fenced MIG allocated uh, by the department. And, and often than not, uh, such projects which are implemented by the municipality from their own baseline MIG, uh, 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 like we have indicated that there is a 5% situation there. Sometimes it's used but not spent prudently. We at times would not be as national and, and uh, correctly so, primarily because of uh, ours in the main quality and norms and standards, but we intervene as the colleague from Salga uh, uh, delivery of these facilities remain a responsibility of the municipality also in terms of major five. So um, we, we, we don't pick up that, but we expect our provincial counterparts and we have noted this uh, uh, honorable uh, chair as a, a problem that we may have to do something about. Uh, that our provincial counterparts, each and every single project, when it's implemented, although it's through MIG, it's a municipal project and it's registered in the system of COCTA, it must be recommended by a sector department. So a provincial department of sport will a recommendation letter to say, yes, we support this project as a proposed by the municipality. We can register it for allocation and implementation. And that is why I would say. The role beyond that has to be going down to that project and monitor it and give that kind of sectoral support. But unfortunately, that is not happening uh, because uh, you do not find people with the necessary capacity in terms of uh, build, uh, build environment skills that are required. And it's a matter that may still be addressed within the department because we just have to find a way and force it to the provinces. Uh, even if it has, we have to recommend use of soft development grant for them to employ such capacity. So be it. So that that is that is the situation as far as that is concerned. With HMPG uh, Honorable Chair, which is in Mamelodi, uh, uh, which is under the city of Swan. Uh, unfortunately, HMPG would know uh, that it's under the municipality of USDG, and that is the space that we still have to get into as a department to ensure that it also serves. Uh, <coughs> part of its mandate. But where the project is now currently, uh, recently, I think two weeks or so ago, uh, over the weekend, we just drove uh, myself and um, uh, Mr. Petella to just look at the site. And, and indeed, there is construction that has happened. The only structure that is still standing there, Honorable Chair, it's that um, uh, co-structure. Uh, everything else in terms of the steel structure, as well as the, the pitch and everything, 
there has been some uh, removal as well as uh, demolition of, of that. But uh, the feedback, and um, maybe Mr. Patel at some point may also want to add at this point, uh, was that uh, yes, indeed, the provincial department uh, appointed the contract uh, to do that work, but due to certain other contractual disputes, that work also has stopped. And indeed, it is a matter that we still have to follow up. Uh, like I've indicated that Mr. Patel may also because now and then he participate in those uh, meetings where that's going to happening in that. Issue of construction mafias. Hey, this one is a difficult one. Um, it's a difficult one because it's, it's, it has an element of criminality in it. The, the only thing that we are trying to do as the department to try and mitigate this kind of a risk is that when projects are allocated, we actually encourage and even become part of the project steering committees that must be set up at the level of where the project is taking place. And you would also expect a fair representation uh, of the relevant stakeholders, including the community through the, the CLO, and then ensure that as and when the processes unfold, um, they unfold accordingly. But, but sometimes you may find if a process unfolds and it does not necessarily serve the interest of a particular grouping, uh, uh, unfortunately, that phenomenon then shows its ugly head. And, and then often than not, we even encourage the municipalities themselves that uh, perhaps even law enforcement agencies must somehow be approached uh, to see if they cannot be able to assist with this problem. But it's a, it's a bigger problem that I'm aware that the country, even beyond our own projects, is actually battling with, and it has been cited elsewhere as a matter of concern that must be looked at. With regard to questions um, asked by Honorable uh, uh, Adams, uh, I think uh, that, that question, much as it is a question, it's, it's also a valuable uh, uh, of the assessment of security needs, you know, for our facilities. Uh, and, and I think it's, it, it's one point that we may have to build into the existing template that we have that municipalities use to complete and submit back to us as a business plan to ask for funding. And that, that aspect, because it's, it's one problem that our facilities really uh, are confronted with and obviously would have to be then intentional uh, about how best to deal with this specific uh, problem. Uh, trouble should, uh, as I indicated, that municipalities would have to indicate in advance. And whilst I'm still at that point, I would want to quickly twin it with the, that was raised by uh, Wendy of uh, inclusion of operation and maintenance uh, uh, budget uh, in advance. We, we already do that. Municipalities always indicate uh, over a period of three years because we want them to indicate over a period of three years within that template uh, availability of, of a budget for maintenance and operations and they do put those amounts, but you get surprised that a year later after the completion of the facilities, or not even three years, uh, uh, but we just have to see how, how best they would do it and draw from that experience and what is it that we can do to improve uh, so as to ensure that that intention is then realized. But also the question, uh, still on the question raised by Honorable Adams, uh, of, the, of the study to establish reasons for, for, for underspending. Uh, we, we are aware uh, uh, of some of the reasons, although it's anecdotal, but I think let's say it indicated uh, the issue of the treasury to conduct an evaluation of all the grants. And uh, we suspect that part of the areas that would be covered, of course, uh, would be a specific area to get a scientific evidence uh, as to why exactly are uh, some of these projects not spending. But in the immediate, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I can indicate that um, there are those instances where municipalities really, in terms of their own collection, myself being a former employee of the municipality, and I've indicated that I was once on a couple of months in different municipalities I've worked on, uh, paid a salary with a municipal infrastructure grant. Yes, it will be repaid back, at whatever point, but the unfortunate part is that as and when the money is required in the project for seamless implementation, that money is not available because it was redirected towards other use. It is it is one of those issues. But other than that, uh, 
there are other issues that have reflected on of uh, what seem to be a, a limited capacity uh, uh, to enforce uh, the proper uh, contract management between the municipality and whatever service providers they are on. Uh, for some of these things, uh, they would re uh, result from unnecessary delays uh, from the side of the contract. It's not always a point of a fault of municipality for whatever reasons, and the, the, the municipality would not necessarily enforce the necessary penalties as per the contract, if there is a proper contract uh, in place. And, and by the time the year ends or the uh, completion, plan completion period arrives, the, the project is still underway. And it has its own challenge in terms of cost escalations. Uh, the role of DSEC uh, with municipalities beyond, beyond MIG uh, I, I think even colleagues from, from Salga uh, have somehow reflected on some of the things that may have need to happen. Uh, I know that some of those as very good uh, inputs. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that, yes, um, we really have to, we should not be allergic to as ourselves where there are weaknesses. It cannot be just, it just ends with a facility. And then a year later, we come with the same department to come and say, we have built a facility and it's not used, but you are the very same department that is responsible to ensure an implementation of a program. And as it has been cited, that the end users primarily are the, the federations and federations are in the domain of, 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 of this to a certain extent, not to say that they are not necessarily independent. So it simply suggests that we would then have to move forward find the way of strengthening our, our planning. The beautiful example, or, uh, Honorable Chair, is South Africa and the Mahikem project. In actual fact, where we are sitting, the tennis would uh, tell the honorable members that we are wasting our time, their time. They have been waiting for this project. Uh, their program has been compromised because uh, of all these issues that we cited. Likewise, with talk all South Africa, we know that by the time that project gets completed, it has a program of softball waiting for it because of the extent of involvement of the Federation uh, uh, in both the planning as well as the monitoring and implementation of the project. So this is the model moving forward that we have drawn lessons to, and we intend moving forward to ensure that we replicate it with each and every single uh, facility, no matter how small it is. And of course, obviously, we would have to bring uh, our partners on board in terms of federations and, and, and our partners within the department and provincial departments. With regard to questions, uh, raised by the Honorable uh, 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 Zondi with, with regard to the issue of the dysfunctionality of the municipality. There are those instances, uh, the Honorable Chair, where we have delayed allocations uh, of certain municipality. Uh, I know the likes of Machawi. It took a while before it was allocated in the, in the free state, as well as Maludia Pufum. Uh, 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 Honorable Chair would remember it as being in the news also all number of reasons and so on. And some in the Eastern Cape, we, we have delayed uh, their allocations precisely because when they make presentations, we would have the presence of provincial COCTA uh, uh, in, in, in those specific meetings. And COCTA would then advise us uh, to say, but these ones, uh, you will be putting what money at risk. And these are the reasons as to why. So, so that's how we have been dealing with it. But unfortunately, uh, there would be those instances you offer a municipality thinking that it's, it's okay, and still you would see uh, those issues of poor performance. The, the issue of, of the EIA, uh, we, we are now vigilant uh, on our person about it. Uh, we learned somehow from the issue of uh, the whole aspect of COCTA, and I think with regard to the other municipalities that came late, I'm not sure exactly what could have been the reason there. What, what we are now doing, uh, when this, this template that speak about, uh, you would include aspects such as the site ownership, who owns the site, the zoning of a site, because you may identify the site and it's only zoned for a hospital. And it's gonna end up being a very long process to convert that to rezone it actually to a, a, a sports facility site. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we include that kind of information, issues of the geotech, 
and, and all that. Now, EIA is also now integrated moving forward to actually confirm, municipality to confirm the status of the EIA with regard to the site that is identified. And, and this, of course, we are now implementing primarily because of the other lessons actually we have uh, drawn from these specific uh, projects. We, we, we try to continually better uh, this program moving forward as, as we draw these lessons. The question of comparison in terms of performance between baseline uh, versus the, the ring fence, the baseline of the that 4.5 or 5% uh, uh, of the MIG that's given to municipality as far as what infrastructure is concerned. We have already cited, yes, in some municipalities, they are doing well in terms of implementation of that 5% uh, of the years. They build good facilities. And in some municipalities where we have allocated, they would counter fund from the baseline and end up actually implementing what seem to be or what, what are actually good facilities. Uh, but we, we have noticed quite a number of uh, 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 cases where there's been extreme wastage. Uh, I've cited only two uh, in terms of Sasolberg uh, as well as uh, Enoch uh, Gijima. Uh, there is another one in, in Pochester uh, here in the Northwest that we did not fund and did not even achieve much, but significant amounts and 20 something million as well was, was spent there. That is the first problem. Uh, the second problem uh, with, with that baseline, uh, having acknowledged successes, of course. Uh, the second other problem we, we have identified is where this 5% is not used for sports facilities at all. And I think I've cited that as well. The main advantage with ring fence, irrespective of its challenges, is that we follow this money until the money we've allocated is spent. That is why even anymore that was allocated in 2016-17, although it was not issue of um, non-expenditure, non-delivery, but actually having ended up with a wrong uh, 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 implementation of the design in that matter must then be just like what happened in HMB. But it's a matter that we're going to have to follow up until until it's resolved. Moving quickly to the to honorable uh, uh, CBM. Uh, I was going to say that don't relax. We are okay. relaxing. We are just <laughs> relaxing. We don't have a uh, ample uh, of time and the gadgets are going down and there's no electricity at all. Okay, honorable chair. Right to my, my apologies. I'll hit them on the head quickly. Okay. Uh, I've noted the issue of the of Honorable Sibia of uh, other codes. Uh, uh, we have already started actually dealing into that with that. We have already contacted Swimming South Africa and, and demonstrated to them that we, we really need also to be looking at other types of uh, facilities, in particular swimming pools, because that sector depends on the facility also to be transformed. And they have provided us with that list. And we believe that moving forward, of course, we'll approach those municipalities which they have recommended to also consider submitting uh, the business plan uh, in accordance with. Uh, the issue of the reasons for enforcement of 5%, I think the matter has somehow been ventilated and an acknowledgement has been the ideal partner who can help us in this regard is uh, COCTA because we have already indicated that no implementation plan should be approved by COCTA in all the provinces unless it reflects uh, the 5% of sports uh, in itself. Uh, I dealt with issues for security assessment. Um, issue of the schools, uh, I think honorable members were agreeing with the recommendation to say, but there is absolutely nothing wrong in building in schools, and we might have to temper with that, whether it's in the framework or it's in the policy, uh, but it has serious uh, uh, constraining uh, effect on what we're supposed to do, also because EPG has recommended construction of facilities in the schools, and perhaps it's a matter that we will also have to pursue intentionally to ensure that is changed. I dealt with matter of um, the HMP chairs, it was raised by Honorable uh, 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 Joseph, uh, the issue of vandalism, I think the whole aspect of security aspect that it must be included in the plans, uh, the intention, of course, would be to address the whole issue of vandalism. Uh, issues of dysfunctional municipalities, uh, we dealt with it. Uh, uh, okay. And then, unfortunately, Honorable Chair, some of the 
the questions raised by, by Honorable Van Dijk. I, I don't know whether it was only on my part, but the line was not very good. I, I could only uh, uh, pick up uh, two issues. The funds that were stopped, uh, what happened to them? Uh, like colleagues have already indicated, that when funds are stopped, they are equally taken back to uh, the department that is responsible, in this case, COCTA, and then uh, based for on whatever reason, then they will be then reallocated according to uh, the priorities that they would have identified. And that's where we also at times happen to lose money because uh, some of the funds that are stopped belong to our project and they are not reallocated to other sports people. And the matter of the contracts uh, uh, that have repudiated from the contract or failed in terms of their performance, these are still the matters we are still pursuing. And I'm sure at some point when we are come, we will be able to give more tangible uh, report as far as this matter is concerned. But we're still engaging with the municipality and they will just tell us that we are still pursuing that contract, it's a process, and then they are not even getting much joy as far as that is concerned. But we will zoom into it mostly because of members uh, have raised it. And I think in a way I've alluded to some of the reasons why projects keep wrong. Uh, I've cited some of the examples. And the whole matter raised by Honorable Chongo about the matter being of, of sports facilities being taken over by DSEC, it's, it's more of a constitutional matter. I've already cited Schedule 5B, and ours in the main is just to intervene to ensure that we see to it that municipalities do deliver their mandate, particularly also as it relates to the life of the constitution. And, the sub and this intervention is actually intended to fulfill that purpose. On sports trust, maybe DG can speak on that. Um, and then, uh, Chair, just to get to your question, I think, and it's the last one, why do we want to increase to 400 uh, uh, million? Uh, uh, in the main chair is to be able to meet the scale of the demand. With the 250 million, uh, we are limited to an extent that even the allocations we have made for the coming financial year, they are very much shoestring, and we don't think municipalities will be able to achieve much. Uh, but over and above that, to then be able to deliver facilities at the bigger scale, yes, that will not solve the current problems that we are faced with, but at least and from the current problems to ensure that we do not see that in future. And with regard to the last PMU issue to raise the chair, uh, that PMU, unfortunately, uh, uh, it only existed for function for one year. And part of the things that made it uh, very difficult to continue to exist was precisely because of the same reason that the chair is raised, the rejection at the level of the municipalities uh, to, to actually provide that kind of a support. So uh, it, it then lost relevance primarily because of those specific uh, uh, reasons. Thank you very much. I just tried to give them one day some of them. Thank you. I'm not sure, Madam Chair, if Mr. Patella wants to say anything quickly. Mr. Patella, very quickly. Uh, Thank you very much, <clears throat> and uh, greetings to honorable members and the chair and my colleagues. Uh, uh, maybe just to, 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 to try and put a bit of a detail on the issue of HMPJ. Uh, HMPJ is one of the projects that we are supporting as a national department. However, it is uh, based at the provincial, Gauteng Provincial Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. <laughs> Our understanding is that uh, the Provincial Department of Water and Culture in Gauteng then appointed the, the Gauteng uh, Department of Infrastructure, uh, of Gauteng, the Department of uh, uh, Gauteng uh, Department of Infrastructure uh, Delivery as their implementing agent. Now, the reason why the project is at pause or it, uh, it has stopped is that between the two departments, they are uh, there are a bit of disagreements on on the contract that they are uh, they got into and uh, as a result the work had to stop and uh, first resolve that matter of 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 the disagreements among themselves uh, 
that is the that is the input I can make. We have given them space to 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 try and, and resolve the issue. If it's not resolved, we are going to try and engage them and understand what is their issue and uh, maybe advise on the way forward. Also, now that I'm already on the platform TTG, I can talk to issues of capacity because it was highlighted by the colleague from mm -hmm. National Center earlier. Uh, what I can just confirm is that at the moment we have um, five technical staff in the office or five colleagues that are technical uh, by means of academic and by means of their experience. And they are focusing on the implementation of these MIG related projects. And we have a total of about nine, including the technical and maybe the not so technical uh, colleagues that are working with the MIG. That is a total of nine people that are working with the MIG. So the issue of capacity to a large extent is, is attended to. Uh, and also I think I may indicate, I may want to indicate that as we were implementing these projects uh, and as we were basically supporting these projects that are being implemented by the municipalities, we also, um, in a way we, we will pause and look back on, on how a particular financial year has gone by and identify challenges and try to come up with, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with some solutions. For example, um, one of the interventions that we have, we, have, we have done, after learning that Enobo has the, the design of the <clears throat> of the grandstand was not uh, the, the, the good design and the, as a result could not be implemented. We then came up with a strategy to say, we need to review the design of each municipality so that we can advise as we go. And also that is being assisted by the process, by the, by the capacity that we indicated that exists now in the department. So, and, and also when, the, when this program started, uh, the department will identify projects. That's why the word identification of projects mostly comes up. And now as time went by, we now request municipalities to make applications. Uh, so these projects are not only now identified, but they are, they are basically uh, man, uh, <clears throat> projects that were requested by the municipality and we have agreed to support these projects uh, through these this, uh, reinforced uh, allocations. Uh, basically, uh, so basically there is a process on, on how we get these projects. So they are, after, after they, make, they make applications, we then seek to engage directly with municipalities on what exactly can we achieve and what can we not achieve and advise each other on what scope you should be, you should be they should be looking at. Um, so the issue of security, I, I know Mr. Mukhara spoke to the issue of the security and uh, we, the view we've been holding is that the security type that we need to be looking at is not only by means of physically cutting the, 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 the facility, but we need to get some sort of an, in, uh, a buy-in from the community, which is motivated by the, by the establishment of steering committee that we motivate municipalities to do at the beginning of each and every project. And every time after we, we have done design review, we encourage them to go back and engage the community and be upfront with what exactly are we gonna be able to achieve with the current budget we had. In closing, I think also <clears throat> the rate, and if you notice that most of the projects that we have implemented, municipalities have had to counter fund which is one of the reasons, if you look at it, you, 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 you can see that there is a need for, for the funding to be, to, be, to, be, to be increased because it is clear that the funding that we are able to allocate is not sufficient for the needs of the community. And also the fact that the, municipality, the, the projects we are funding are the requests made by municipalities it therefore link the process into the IDP process because municipalities submit projects that are in their IDP, basically projects that are in their IDP as wish list, but with no uh, uh, budget for, for, for them. So in other words, it assist address uh, projects that are already identified in the, in the IDP, but municipality had no alternative of funding. So, 
Thank you very much. That is my input. Thank, thank you very much, Sungezo. Thanks. Um, Madam Chair, just to wrap up very quickly, I think the issue of the sports trust um, has not been addressed. Uh, just to indicate, Madam Chair, the sports trust does build sports facilities, but it's confined to multi-purpose sports, court, sports courts, which are built within schools. Now, in terms of our agreement with the sports trust, we actually provide funding for 10 sports courts to be built every year. And they also mobilize resources from the private sector as part of their uh, corporate social uh, responsibility to build sports, um, these multi-purpose sports courts. So it is very limited to just the multi-purpose sports courts in schools, Madam Chair. And if you look at this year, we are building also those multi-purpose sports courts as legacy of the 2023 Nepal World Cup. So um, it, it doesn't, um, Sports Trust does not deliver on the other basic sports facilities like we see in the municipalities with sports, sports soccer fields and other uh, supporting infrastructure for other codes of sport. Uh, Madam Chair, I think uh, the chairperson also asked about, you know, the department offering capacity to the municipalities, which they refused. Now, Madam Chair, when we started with the MIG in 2016, 2017, firstly, I must indicate, Madam Chair, that uh, and in response to why is the money not coming to the department, when we started the process to uh, and putting the proposal to National Treasury to say we want the MIG funding to come to us, it was approximately about uh, in total, you know, when we looked at the 5%, it was almost like 2 billion rands. And we said in the first year, perhaps they could give us a billion rands so that you can see what our performance is. And if we're doing well, then you would give us the funding. Uh, and and um, that was not uh, accepted by the National Treasury. And hence, we had to take this compromise position of taking you know, the four, 300 million as the first year. Um, and then to see incrementally if we would get more based on our performance. And at that stage, Madam Chair, you know, because we were given a small amount for building capacity and we could not immediately recruit people, we had proposed that in the conditional ground framework that we put in a clause that talks about, you know, transversal professional services that could be um, advertised and the municipalities then within their budget, they would then appoint, they would then pay for these professional services. But the municipalities were not amenable. They did not like that. They did not want that because they said they wanted to do their own procurement. And besides, some of them had indicated they already had professional services within their own uh, capacity. But you can see, Madam Chair, not all the municipalities have that services. So on that grounds, you know, that, that um, we've had to then remove that uh, uh, requirement from the conditional grant framework. Um, and Madam Chair, um, as indicated, you know, the team says we have now built the capacity. Uh, uh, a colleague from National Treasury says that there was funding allocated to us. Yes, the funding was allocated to us, but we've gone to 178 municipalities, Madam Chair. And, you know, we still have to go to another 27 for the first time. But 125 municipalities does not give us a full spectrum of what the need is because there's wards, there are different wards in that municipality. We may have built one facility in each of or one or two. And in some of the facilities, you can see like the multi, uh, the multi year facilities, like the precincts, et cetera, we're putting in more funding over multiple years. But there is still a way to go before we even address the backlog of infrastructure in the country and to address all the needs of the people of the country, especially where it's needed most. So 178 municipalities looks a lot, but we still have to get to so many more wards and so many uh, um, you know, districts and, uh, um, uh, um, and local municipalities. And that's not even talking about the metros, Madam Chair, where as much as they may be metros, there are townships and other areas that still need sports facilities. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I think uh, from the three of us, we've tried to cover as many of the responses to the questions that have been asked. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, DTG and uh, 
uh, colleagues at the end. Thank you very much, Chair. <clears throat> and, and much appreciation to, to the members of the Portfolio Committee on the questions and comments that have been raised around this important uh, issue. And I just want upfront, Chair, to appreciate the response uh, by both by Salga and Treasury and probably say, I, I, I really want to support Salga when they say probably they, there is a need for a follow-up meeting uh, that the portfolio committee might see them fit. Uh, and, and, and probably once uh, the portfolio committee agrees on, on that date of the meeting, inform them early so that they submit their presentations on time so that they can, uh, we can interact with that presentation. But Chair, I, I really want to, to, to comment first on, on the importance of the sport facilities in general in communities. And I think the, the committee has tried to, to get into this space because once we understand what is the role and importance of these sport facilities, particularly in in building the nation, in, in social cohesion, in dealing with the social ills, we will all understand why this topic is so critical. And, and I, I want to stress the fact that I think it was Honorable Pumshongo who, who spoke about the IGR, the Intergovernmental Relations. I think it's important that we deal with this because all the things that we are discussing here mainly are a gap or a lack of, uh, or a cut off of, the, of, of how municipalities must work with the departments and making sure that this works. And probably uh, we can also come and draw in the issue of the district development model now uh, in terms of how then do we improve on how this model that was, that, that was put together seven, eight years ago on, on, the, on, on, on providing sport facilities. Now, <clears throat> When we talk about the municipal infrastructure grant in particular, because I, I think it speaks to municipalities that are not a metro municipalities, because the metros, you would be talking about the urban settlement development grant, which, which resides under human settlement. And at some point, the, 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 the portfolio committee need to bring Okay, um, uh, I'm still in 11% uh, percent seemingly now does have problem. Uh, honorable members, maybe the M is going to come back uh, in this topic, which is so important to all of us. Uh, let me saying that really uh, we do recommend that before this proposal, which I put when I was um, contributing that both committees must meet uh, uh, with a corporate governance uh, and traditional affairs. Uh, also the standing committee of uh, appropriation uh, and the select committee, it's sort of, as I'm proposing an Indaba a committee on education and technology and sports and arts and culture. Uh, it's, it's when the, 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 the committee, select committee is going to invite their MECs to be part of us. And surely that thing can take us uh, to, 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 to charge a way forward and to look at these gaps. These gaps, we cannot look at it uh, alone. And uh, you know, when you talk of human segment that they must all, also uh, play a role. It means all those intergovernmental departments. But I, I must, honorable members, ask your indulgence that uh, the, the first follow-up meeting Really, uh, we cannot do it justice to Okokta. Let's agree that 
uh, we are going to schedule a follow-up meeting where Ukopta must come and 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 Ukopta Salka and 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 the department because really uh, without us together uh, we cannot do any justice, especially that even themselves they were saying that the 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 input by each department, the detail, uh, they are not having it, they will work on it. I'm, I'm really proposing that honorable members, uh, this thing, Yamakumsha, uh, it lower power mode, uh, battery is on remaining, is on, on 10%. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting oh, oh, DM got challenged, no. but... No, oh, I'm back, bet? Chair, but I'm back, but I was almost finished. I think you've okay. covered me. The, the main issue is the issue of the follow-up meetings for me. I'm quite happy with what you are saying. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, DM. Uh, le let me take this opportunity to say uh, we do thank everyone, and you have seen um, uh, uh, Salka and Treasurer that it was not out of respect to you. It was about the, the, the principle that uh, the, the presentation must come in time, but uh, your responses we valued them uh, very much uh, appreciating. Honorable members, uh, I'm not sure uh, now I can say the meeting has adjourned uh, like we are releasing the department and our visitors. Uh, if we still have a few minutes, we'll deal with the next uh, thing in the agenda. I thank you so much to everybody. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Pagis. Thank you, you, very much, Chair. Bye. Thank thank you, Chair. you so much. Bye. <laughs> thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, uh, so do we have e e minutes that you can adopt today? Yes, Madam Chair, the minutes of the 9th uh, of September on the screen. The 9th and the 13th of September. Hey, my screen, what, oh, okay. Hey, I'm, I'm a lucky woman. 10% still going on. Uh, honorable members, I'm, I'm aware that you are all having the, this challenge. Let again thank you, honorable members. Uh, we need much time to do this uh, topic of today. Uh, go on. Oh, yes, I did read it this minutes. As I'm putting these minutes, uh, now I, I remember that I've read these minutes. Uh, honorable members, uh, these are your minutes. Can any member uh, propose the adoption of the, the minutes? Uh, honorable Malomane. Thank you, honorable chair. I move that the minutes of the 9th of September be adopted as a true reflection of what has transpired. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Malomane. Honorable Sibia. Thanks, Chairperson. I'm supporting the adoption of the minutes of the night. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much. The minutes are adopted. Uh, honorable members, uh, our, our secretariat, uh, they've listened, and I propose, whilst I'm chairing, that they must look at uh, the motivation of starting again to do a visit. Oh, we still have 13th September. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 13th September. No, we're doing well. No one the planner, how I'm going to get in the planner. Thank you, honorable member. 
So I'm even speaking alone, worried about uh, I'm going to join plenary. Um, this I mean as of the 13th of September, honorable members, uh, I've seen honorable Adams hand. Thank you, Chairperson. I move for the adoption of the 30th September's minutes. Thank you, Honorable Member. Reflection, thank you. Your network is bad. Thank you, Honorable. And Honorable Sibia. Honorable Sibia. Honorable Malomane. I'm supporting Chair the, the adoption of the minutes. Thanks. Thank you. The minutes of the 13th of September has been accepted as to reflection. And then uh, uh, let me thank you again, uh, hoping that the electricity will come back in order that we must join the planner. Uh, thank you to all honorable members. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And Andy Fatad. Yeah, cookies. You did a way to. Yeah, cookies, and it comes one is on game, and I will play that way. You know, but now I'm going to chat a way to. Imbi, 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 Power to the people. <laughs> <laughs>